All right, and welcome into Niswinger Field, home of the Valley View Spartans. I am Andy Horton alongside Jared Bergstrom. And Jared, we are getting ready for our MVCC Game of the Week, week number three between the Valley View Spartans and the Bellbrook. It's Golden Eagles, right? All right, so, uh, and tonight to pick our game with us, we got uh, none other than our friend, Tony Peters. How you doing tonight, Tony? I'm good, man. Thanks for having me back. I love doing this with you guys. All right, and if you guys don't know, Tony and his friend Seth, they run Southwest Ohio Full Court Press. They uh, cover everything high school basketball related, Southwest Ohio area. So they, if once we get the basketball season, they're, they're the guys to, to, to go to. So um, without further ado, I guess we're ready for our pregame picks, guys. All right, so the first game we got Fairborn and uh, West Carrollton. Jared, who are you going to pick? West Carrollton's got to break that losing streak, and I think it happens tonight against Fairborn. All right. Sounds good. How about you, Tony? I'm going to go opposite. I think Fairborn, they've shown they got a little more offensive potential, I think, than West Carrollton so far. I think they'll get it done tonight. All right. I've taken a lot of L's picking West Carrollton over the last year and a half or so. All right. I, I, I might take another one tonight. I'm going to go West Carrollton. I believe in the Pirates. At some point, they will get a win. Um, our next game, we have... Uh, we got Milton Union and Oakwood. Tony, who are you picking? This was last year to be Milton Union, but I got to go Oakwood this time around. I actually agree. The the Lumberjacks, they're showing new life, something that I've never seen out of them. Got a chance to go 3-0. and I'm going to pick them to go 3-0. and Jared? I'm going to pick the Lumberjacks, too. What this Valley View team did to Milton Union last week, only giving up that kickoff return at the beginning of the game, I just think Oakwood's defense is finally mature enough. They're juniors and seniors instead of freshmen and sophomore, what we've seen. All right, so sounds good. Our next pick, we got Pickerington Central and Centerville. Jared, who you picking? I this is not a favorable matchup for Centerville, and I'm going to pick against them this week too. I'm going to pick pick Central. All right, Tony, who you picking? Same thing, based on what I saw last week against Wayne. I think Pick Central's got to take this one as well. All right, I guess we're going clean sweep. The Elks are not going to get a win this week. Our next game, we got Fairmont and LaSalle. Fairmont going down south to Cincinnati this week. Uh, Tony. I picked LaSalle last year and I failed, so they got to give me this time right. So I'm going to take LaSalle on this one in a close one. All right, sounds good. Jared, who's your pick? I had a heck of a week last week catching up to you in the picks, and I, it, it pains me to pick against Fairmont, but I'm going to pick LaSalle. Wow, okay, so 3-0 against Fairmont again. I, I got LaSalle winning. Our, our next game, we got uh, Springboro and Elder. Jared, who you picking? Last year was a close game between the two at Carefly Field. I don't think it's going to be close this year. I think Elder's going to dominate Springboro. All right, who you got? I think it is going to be close uh, this time around, but I do think Elder's just got a special way they play football, and I think they're going to get away with this one again, especially at home. All right, well, I mean, we got a lot of the same picks this week, so hopefully uh, either you lose a lot or I, or I win a lot. We'll see, because um, it was not a good week for me last week. And our final game, guys, is Valley View and Bellbrook. So who you got? I really like this Bellbrook team, how they run the football and how they play. But, man, this Valleyville team is even more special. I'm taking the Spartans tonight. Didn't you tell me, like, sometime during the week, Jared, that Valley View has, like, outscored their opponents, like, 80 to 7 or something in the first quarter of, of games this year? Yeah, uh, I'm sorry. I'm picking I'm picking the Spartans. There's – it's like – the Golden Eagles, they're a good team. But, sorry, but Valley View, they're going to win this one. Go Spartans. I don't think I have to make it a thing. It's going to be another clean sweep. I'm going to take the Spartans to win again this year. All right, guys. So that is going to do it for our MVCC Game of the Week 3 pregame picks, and we will be back for kickoff. We'll see you guys then. Welcome into Nice Songer Field as we get ready for our MVCC game of the week for the week number three as the Bellbrook Golden Eagles are going to take on the Valley View Spartans. Jared Bergstrom and Andy Horton joined by Tony Peters in the booth. Andy, why don't you go ahead and introduce us to Bellbrook's head coach. All right, Jerry. Well, Bellbrook's head coach, 
is Jeff Jenkins. He is in his fifth year as the head coach. He is 38 and 11 in five seasons. So that is a spectacular record coming in. Um, keys to the game for the Golden Eagles. They're going to have to stop Stewart and Epifino. Yeah, they run a triple option. Definitely going to have to stop this slow. Those two, the, those two guys are going to have to be effective on the offensive side. Um, and they're going to have to keep their downs manageable because, you know, uh, triple option team, they don't really throw the ball too many times. And so picking up a long third down is going to be really tough for them. Tony, you want to tell us what they're going to have to do on the defensive end? For Bellbrook, yeah, I mean, I, I think the big thing is going to be you got guys like Caden Henson and Micah Valenti for Valley View. They're just such great playmakers, and you're going to have to be able to contain them. You know, Valley View's a tough team. The fact that they've put the points they have so far this year offensively, you're going to have to get down and beat them in the trenches. So it starts there and just keeping those guys contained as much as possible. Yeah, and then they're also, one thing they're definitely going to have to do, try and get out of the first quarter. We talked about it in the pregame, Jared. Uh, they've outscored their opponents something like 80 to 80 to 7 in the first quarters of games. So they're going to have to try and keep the Spartans down early. Jared, do you want to go ahead and tell us about the uh, head coach for the Spartans? Yes, it is second year man Matt King coming off of a trip to the D4 state semifinals last year. So a 13 and 2 record, I think, last year is what they finished with. Offensively, it's going to be this offensive line. You're going to have to work on keeping Caden Henson upright, making the holes for their running backs. And then secondly, they're going to have to protect Caden Henson. Defensively, they're going to have to have to limit the big plays. Um, Epifino and Stewart both have about four or five plays of 10 or more yards. And then ultimately on any defense, you want to force turnovers. So Tony, on the Valley View side, who is a player we have to keep an eye out for? And I, you, you can't say Caden Henson. I'm going to go Micah Valanti. Uh, I mentioned him when I was talking about what Bellbrook needed to do. But, you know, again, when you got when you got guys that can go out and, and make plays for you, you got to lean on them. So for Bellbrook, you're going to have to know to stop him. And if you're Valley, you want to feed him. Let him go to work. Let him use those powerful legs, running game he's got, and let him lead him. And Andy, on the other side, how about Bellbrook, either side of the ball? Well, so I think uh, probably Micah Smith, he, uh, I'm pretty sure in the game that we saw him play against, it was, was it Fairmont last year or was it? Miamisburg. In his game against Miamisburg last year, he was he was terrorizing the Vikings all game long. Uh, he's a very successful running back. He's going to break the tackles and get to the second and third levels and you know, breaking off big, big time runs. So you're going to have to watch out for him and uh, try and contain him. That's for sure. All right, it looks like the Spartans are about ready to come out, and we are about ready for our MVCC game of the week for week number three as the Belbert Golden Eagles take on the Valley View Spartans. Makai Smith on to return this one back for the Golden Eagles. This one booted, and that one's going to go out of bounds. That's going to be a penalty on the Spartans. A little surprise there by a... An early mistake by the Spartans. Not the way you want to start a game out, especially this big. Going to be up to the 35 now where Belbrook will start this one. You know, that's one that I always forget, that, that it's different from college and, and the pros. They you only get it up to 35 and not the 40. All right, Valley View student section already starting. The, I believe that we will win, Chant. Pretty confident. Well, when you put a when you're out scoring your opponents 129 to seven in two games, <laughs> I I think the confidence is there. You can afford to do that. So number two, Lucas Heckler under center. Actually, that's Luke Benettis. Oh. It looked like number seven, so they're going for a different change. That pass was incomplete. Kind of surprised Belbert comes out and throws it on the first play of the game. They're a traditional, like you said, triple option, run heavy team. And I think that's why they kind of stalled out against Miamisburg last week, getting into force, forced into passing downs. Yeah, and I think last year when we when we got their Miamisburg game, I'm pretty sure they, they ran the ball upwards of 50 times. I mean, like, so they, they're relentless with it, but they do like, like, like to sprinkle in the pass, like, you know, probably eight times about that a game, I'd say. And uh, so the, they'll, they'll come up and they'll surprise you with one. Run there, gained about four on the play. 
third and six. And this is, you know, a little far for them, you know. Like, they, they can definitely get a third and six, but when, when they, they would prefer a third and four. It would be a lot easier. Bonetta's back to pass. Throws the middle of the field. Hauled in around the 50. Still on his feet. Makes a man miss. He's at the 20. The 10. Will he be caught? He will get into the end zone. That's number 82, Noah Berrios, I believe. The huge catch and run off of the slant. He's able to make one man miss, and it's off to the races. An early lead for the Golden Eagles. Surprising again, like we were talking about, they got a two pass plays in that first possession. You can tell they were trying to catch Valley off guard, and it definitely worked there. Great run in the route by Barrios to get open on that slant, like you said. And I think it's pretty safe to assume that this is the first um, time the Valley View has trailed all season long. Outside of their opening kickoff they gave off to Milton Union last week, yeah. Oh, really? Okay. So that, that's the only <laughs> time they've trailed in the game. So now I guess we get to see how Valley View will respond against facing deficit for only the second time this year. And it's going to be the first time we get to see Caden Henson, which I, I think everyone knows. I'm I was about to say, go ahead and talk about. him up, Andy, while we get ready for kickoff. Well, 400 yards coming into tonight's game, uh, completing... Uh, 60% of his passes. 60%, yeah, I, was, I, was trying to, I was trying to find it. 60% of his passes, also doing a little bit on the ground. He has eight touchdowns to zero interceptions. So, you know, the... the and that's all and only playing in the first half of every game. <laughs> Just amazing, man. You know you're a special team and a special player when you're that caliber of a player and you're only playing half of the games to start the season. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you just look at well, the... I mean, when you when you put up 42 points against opponents in the first quarter, I know opponents is bad, but I mean, still, you, you're scoring on six offensive possessions. That's pretty impressive, that, especially at high school level. And, and none of them were defensive. All offense. All offense. 59 to nothing week one against opponents. He was 11, or excuse me, he was 8 for 11, 165 yards, four touchdowns. And then last week in the 60 to 7 win against Milton Union, kind of exercising some demons after that being their only regular season loss last year. It was 14 of 18, 246 yards, four touchdowns. Great start for the senior quarterback. And see him come out now. He's going to lead the team out. And what looks to be hopefully a quick scoring possession here for the Spartans. Receiver goes in motion. Henson's going to take this one, tuck it, run up the middle. Henson at the 40, at the 50. Henson, it's going to be a foot race, and nobody's going to catch Caden Henson. An 80-yard touchdown run to answer back to the Valley View Spartans. Caden Henson can do it all sorts of different ways, ladies and gentlemen. Normally, we see him do it through the air. This time, he does it on the ground. I wasn't expecting their first play to be a quarterback keeper, but he takes it back to the house. Not, not for 80 yards. That's a, that's a great response, though. We do have some laundry out, so we'll see what the call is and play is there. I, I don't know if we saw it, but it looked like Caden Henson might have done that Tyreek Hill peace sign as he was walking into the end zone. You can tell, us, I think once he got inside the 20, him and him and it looked like Johnny Desick from Bellbrook were kind of jawing a little bit. So this might be an unsportsmanlike conduct. But with it being a scoring touchdown, it should just be from the pen, uh, point after attempt. to see what the call is. Touchdown is good. Dead ball, unsportsmanlike on value. On Henson. I was about to say, they're not gonna, they don't give you the number, but it was, yeah, Henson. There you go, Jared, one for one today. Well, we talked about how they would respond. That's a heck of a way to respond on the first play from scrimmage. It's 
See Valview out here to kick the extra point. Can't see the number, and Belbrook almost got there on that left side. Carson Kinder. I want to see if maybe we have a replay of that touchdown run before we get ready for kickoff here. So a lot of explosiveness here in the first, not even two full minutes into the barely, game. Barely a minute in, a lot of great offensive play. Oh my goodness, I didn't even notice that. That is, talk about getting off to the races. Got one, got one play that was 55 plus yards, the other one going. 80, because that's the 20. Back the other way. So now the ball's in their court here. How did they respond to Caden Henson putting a long touchdown like that? So you got to return this kickoff back for a touchdown. Or the, the, the explosives or, are explosive. Or give yourself the position <laughs> so you can, you know, run some clock on them and take your time on this next possession and drive. Yeah, and I, I think I would agree with that, Tony, because I don't think Valley View wants This to, one, oh, that was, could have went out of bounds. Or I don't think Belbrook wants to get into a shootout with Valley View. We've seen the insane explosiveness of, of the Valley View offense in the first two weeks. And though the, the Belbrook has a good offense, you know, they're not putting up 60 points a week. It's a good starting field position. Uh, looks like it's going to be the 42 or maybe the 43 yard line. Now you're going to have Benettis lead out the Golden Eagles again. A lot of motion here in the backfield. Blockers going back to right, and there's going to be a handoff up the middle for about a gain of maybe two. I did not see Tanner Stewart, uh, Tanner Stewart number 48 with the carry. And Landon West, number 50 for the Spartans and on the stop. And 37. I think there's a very generous spot with a gain of three. And it's going to hand this one off to Epifino. And he gets about a gain of maybe two up to the 50. That was a great job on that defensive possession for Valley View. They did a good job of filling those gaps. Bubber was able to get that hole opened up. You could tell there was a little bit of patience as they were trying to find that hole, but the Spartans were able to cover it pretty well. Be second and or third and six. They got a receiver right on here, so we'll see if they throw it again. Benettis back to pass, throws it, and that is incomplete. That was high and intended for, is that number five or number six? Number five, I think. Either Johnny Desix or maybe Preston Pettit. Maybe we'll check here in the replay. And that is number five. Yeah, Johnny Desix is the intended target. Eagles are going to have to punt now. So you see Belbrook kind of flip-flops their game plan, passed it twice on the first possession, and this time they stick it to the ground. And you know, Jared, all the talk coming into the game about Caden Henson. I am surprised he did not fair catch that one. Yeah, I, I 
would have if, if I was in there. There was a lot going on there. Uh, but all the, all the talk about Caden Henson coming into the game, Luke Panetta has been pretty good for Bellbrook. Um, you know, the numbers aren't quite as spectacular, but 185 yards on the season, 16% uh, completion percentage, and now two touchdowns on the year. So, you know, it's, he's not wowing or like blowing anybody away, but he's being efficient, helping his team get into good positions, and, you know, helping them win games. There must have been an unsportsmanlike conduct I didn't see. It's going to move Valley View half distance to the goal now. Play clock is down to 12. Henson going to hand it off here. Might get to the line of scrimmage. Preston Valenti was on the defensive stop there. So both sides got Valenti's. The spelling's a little different. But. Henson looking back at the sideline for instruction from King. Got five wide, two up to the top of the screen, three down to the bottom. Henson back to pass, has a nice pocket. Henson still moving around, going to check it down, and is that a catch? No, Incomplete. That is just wide of the target. That is number six, Cash Woolett, the intended wide receiver on the play. Henson had a lot of time in the pocket there. That was a great job by the Valley View offensive line to let him get the move around a little bit. Probably the longest they've had the block all season. <laughs> yeah, and you can see the poise there too. I mean, he, he kind of got. I mean, he stayed in the pocket. Second, you know, got danced around for a minute and then resettled, found his guy. Henson back to pass, gonna throw it out for a first down, and that, that could have been a face mess. That is Jed Lynch there, number 32. First time we've called his name tonight, but a guy that we've talked about a lot over the years. You watch the end of this. Replay, it looked like he might have got a hold of that face mask when he brought him down. I think they called it. They did call face mask there. Okay. It was an obvious call, though. I'm two for two on these before the refs even throw the flag. And Valley View student section affirming Belbrook that they're not allowed to do that. So that's going to take it out across the 30 to about the 32. Henson lined up alone in the backfield. Henson two-step drop, and he's just going to tuck this one, run. Nice open field tackle there. I believe that was number 40, Jacob Umina. Nice coverage there on the play by the Eagles, not allowing Henson to find an open man and forcing him out of the pocket, and only allowing a pickup of about one. That's how you're going to beat Kate Hanson. you got to play good coverage and then you know, make him make a play with his feet. Obviously, he can burn you doing that, but I prefer him make us pay with his feet than make him pay with the arm. And here's going to be the first handoff of the game. Uh, leaps across the 33, maybe gets to the 34. Jed Lynch again on the carry. <laughs> Say no gain on the play. All right, so this on this third and long here, this is your Bellbrook. You got to play that balance game. You want to, you, you got to keep a spy on Henson, but you don't want to give Henson ability to stand in the pocket for long to find somebody downfield. Three wide receivers, running back goes in motion. And there's a nice first down catch. Was that number? That's Cash once again. Cash will it. Number six. 
Pass complete to Cash Law. Tackled by Jake Lopez. So he takes the ball out to the 44. So his name's First Cash, and, and his last name, I, I don't know if you heard, but his wallet, so. Be a handoff to Lynch. Lynch bursts through. Gets close to the 50. Tackled by Preston Valenti again. Lynch gets the carry and will lose about two on the play. And I think Lynch should have tried to stretch that to the outside. Instead, he goes inside, and there's not much room there. And again, it was Preston Valenti on the defensive end getting involved in that stop. He's doing a great job of ball hawking right now and, and getting those tackles. Yeah, we've been calling his name a lot here in this first quarter. Third and six here for the Spartans. Play clock is at 10. Looks like Bilbrick might be a man here. Henson back to pass. Henson throws the middle of the field. And what a catch at the first down marker. That is yet once again, ladies and gentlemen. He's having a second drive right now. We didn't see him on that on the first drive. Oh, Jed Lynch, here he comes. You take a look at the replay here. High usage rate. You see, he, he just goes in between the two Bellbrook defenders to get that catch out of the air. Jake Lopez was pretty close in coverage, but just not good enough. Henson claps for the ball, or he's gonna keep it. Makes a man miss. Henson still on his feet, bounces to the outside and gets tackled. Forward progress might get him to the 41. And Only a pickup of three. So after that big run, Henson had on that first play drive. Belberg's kind of played a good check down game with him, at least keeping a spy out there. Henson again, and there's no room there. He's going to get up to the 40, so looks like they're going to give him the 39. Three or four Belbert defenders there to take him down. So you can, again, the, the Golden Eagles doing a really great job, like you said, Jared, of keeping him in check after that long run. An another third down, though, so we'll see if they can get a stop this time. Valley View's converted on their last two this drive. Third and five here at the 39. I love the patience the Spartans have. You can tell they're not in a rush, taking their time, getting the right call in, reading what that defense is giving them. The play clock is at five though, so they gotta hurry up or they're gonna have to, bend to spend a timeout. Henson takes it, throws it middle of the field, hauled in at the 30, 20, 10, and this one is gone. I can't see the number. Number eight. Number eight, that is Caleb Musgrove. So Musgrove kind of went on a double cross path there all the way across the field. Again, Valley View using those short slant routes, and Belbrook's got to do a better job of covering that. The Spartans are doing a great job of getting in between those zone reads and getting those touchdowns early on. Yeah, it's going to be a long night. I mean, Valley View, if you can get through, like you said, get through the zones like that, it's going to be easy as one, two, three the rest of the night. for. The, and that one almost again from that left side. Johnny Desick again getting his, almost got his hands on that one. He might have got his hands on that one, actually. Yeah, it didn't like go like a normal extra point does. So maybe he did get a finger on that one. But it still went to the uprights. That's all that matters. So now as Bellbrook gets set to take their third offensive possession, 
what what has to happen you think on this drive i mean we saw they were lethal passing at the first drive had that big play big scoring play but that last drive they went to that triple option and didn't get anything i think they need to get that mix back into it you know they, they obviously we know they're a run heavy team they're going to still stick to that stick to what you do well but don't be afraid to throw a little more confident i mean it worked on that first drive so why not try it again and, and see if you can't get valley view off guard yet again you never know So we're going to see. Is that Benetis back there on the far side to return this one? I don't see two number sevens on the roster. Short kick. Looks like it's 17. Okay, 17. That one would have gone out of bounds too, and I think Bellbrook should have let that one bounce out. Well, only about a difference of four yards back, but still. Valley keeps kicking it towards the sideline. It's almost like they don't want to try to kick it all the way out down the field. It looks like they're trying to get a little shorter and maybe try to avoid one of the two Bellbrook returners they have back. But yeah, I think this is a really big possession for Bellbrook. You can't afford to not score on this possession, give Valley View the ball back, and potentially put this a double-digit lead. It's going to be a lot harder for them to keep running with it if we get to that double-digit mark. Yeah, and you know that's one of the really tough things about playing the, uh, about playing Valley View. They they just they just never stop coming at you. That is number ten. Adam Dixon is going to get the recovery. 48 on the It looks like they're giving Belbert the ball still. Yard, two yards. Hmm. That looked like Dixon just the way Valley the ball. celebrated. That looked like one of the refs. One of the refs signaled that way. Okay, yeah, so we're not exactly sure what happened there, but uh, a huge break for the Eagles. Yeah, we were talking pregame. They they got to get out of this first quarter if they want to have a chance. And turning it over there, and Bellbrook is going to take a timeout to talk about this one. With 2.44 left here in the first quarter, trailing by seven, but you kind of feel Valley View is building that momentum, and they're about to start to blow this one wide open. They're at least on the verge, man. Like, uh, kind of like Tony said just a minute ago, the – the Golden Eagles, they're going to have to find some kind of way to get something going. Their running game, which is which we're normally used to seeing be very effective, is not worked so far. Uh, Valley View's done a great job shutting that off. And so, you know, that's going to put a lot on the shoulders of Benettis. And, you know, like, like, like we already said, he's been efficient this season, but he's not a guy who's going to drop back 25, 30 times and, and win you the game. At least not, not yet. At not least. how we think. <laughs> so I guess we'll see. Especially when you're playing a defense like Valley View, you don't want him when he's not used to stepping at that, stepping back that much to try to do that. Yeah, all the playmakers on both sides of the wall for Valley View make it so tough for teams. And you know, we, we talk so much about their offense. That doesn't mean that there's not guys out there on the defensive end that are also extremely effective. There's a reason they've only, I think, given up seven points this season, and it was a kickoff return. Yeah, one of their starting safeties, Owen Marolara. He's a real star. Great run right there. That is number 48, Tanner Stewart, the big fullback, getting things going. We just talked about how the running game struggled right there. You know, it was the first positive run of the game. It's a great job by the Bellberg offensive line to get Stewart back and then an even better job by him to, to get some extra yards after that initial contact. Big first down play now, Valley or Belbrook looking to build momentum off of it. Out to the top. This one's going to be a handoff to the outside and nice open field tackle there. Let's see if I can get the number. Vincent Epifino, number 10, was the runner. With Jed Lynch. Lynch. Calling his name on both sides of the ball now tonight. I think it was a loss of yard on the play, too. Yeah, second and 11 now. Oh. 
minute 40 on the clock. Roper's got two wide here. Benetez rolls out and he's gonna get sacked. His eyes were up looking downfield and he didn't see the Valley View defender Cesar Berryman coming in to make the sack number 16. Good job by Berryman there. He's only a sophomore. Gotta like it when some of your top playmakers defensively are underclassmen like that. You know you're gonna have them for a couple more years. Yeah, and that's something that this Valley View team, and they're really good at doing. I mean, they they have these kids. They they have a great like youth program, and and they they get them started young, and and they they feed them into the Spartans program, and and you know. Benetta's pass wide open co or complete. That and that's is going to be an, a touch tying touchdown. Micah Smith, number one. So he hasn't been able to get it done on the ground so far, but he does it through the air. He's going to tie this thing up, or have a chance to tie this thing up after the extra point for the Eagles. There was a miscommunication for Valley View on that possession. Smith was wide open up the middle of the field there. Yeah, no one really came down to, to play coverage on him. He ran right past the corner and the safety on his way to an uncontested touchdown. Now number 84 is going to be out there, Riley Furren for the extra point. He ties it up at 14 with just under 40 seconds left here in the first quarter. And like we talked about, all Belbrook had to do was just get out of the first quarter without getting blown out. And going into the second quarter with a tie ball game, I would say that that is a win for the Golden Eagles. Wait, you got as long as it stands. <laughs> I was about to say, yeah, we've still got 30 seconds or 39 seconds left. See how explosive Valley View is going to be. The way Caden Henson has played today, I would not be, I would not rule out another long touchdown run or even a kickoff return. Who knows? Oh, my back is going to kill me. So, oh. Looks like you're going to have Musgrove and Lynch back there to return this one. Also, Anthony Valenti. Anthony Valenti. Dale Musgrove and Dead Lynch Heat. Got it. All right, Farron, kick off. Farron to kick off again for the Golden Eagles. and. He boots this one away. This kid. one goes into the end zone, so that'll be a touchback. And I don't know or Valley's going to start this one at the 20 yard line again. So if you're a Valley View with 39 seconds left, are you trying to get a score here, or do you think that you just run the ball, let the quarter run out? I just say you go with your your play, what your game plan was. I mean, you don't have to score to get out of this first quarter. And if, if it's there, catch them off guard, maybe. We'll see how they line up. You see there's only two defenders over here on the left side or the right side of the field. Nice and one-on-one -on -one opportunity. There Lynch goes. I was talking about the possibility of Henson keeping that one with the one on yeah, the one-on-one -on -one coverage receivers clear out the side. All right, so an update from some scores around the area. Fairborn, they're up seven to nothing right now over the uh, West Carrollton Pirates. The Elks are up eight to nothing over Pick Central, and uh, fourteen to nothing Elder over Springboro right now. Those are the games it's I got. It's not close, right, is it? It's not close enough for you, Tony? There's a lot of football to be played tonight, Jared. <laughs> All those games still in the first quarter. And that one will be the end of the first quarter here. Knotted up in 14. Valley View will have the ball, and we come back second and four. So what, what does Valley View defensively have to do to – I guess we, we didn't really plan on talking about what does Valley View got to do to stop Bellbrook, but what do they got to do? Um, they have to stop 
making you know defensive mistakes in the secondary because that's really what it's been. There was a huge miscue for the wide open touchdown to Smith, and then yeah, and the first one too. Yeah, the the touchdown for Noah Barrios, number 82. He, I mean, they just missed tackles in the secondary. He made he, he broke one tackle, made one more guy miss, and then it was off to the races for 55, 60 yards. So like you know, if they can just clean up their tackling, just do the little things, I think that they'll be in good position. I think you got to trust your front seven. You know, we know we know Bellbrook can run the football. We've seen them score twice in the passing game. You can't bail on what you've done previously just because they're throwing the ball right now. You still have to respect that run game a little bit, and, and the, the stops will come. Yeah, and well, I mean, we saw they kind of struggled there for a little bit. They had that one big run from ta uh, from Tanner Stewart. Stewart. Stewart, yeah. yeah. And then after that, then the, the big pass to Smith came. So everything starts from the running game they just they, they just have to make sure that they can stay committed to that if, if you're the Eagles and if you're the Spartans you have to stay committed to stopping that I would not be surprised to come out of the quarter here if Valley View tries a catch Bellbrook off guard looks like they got that one-on-one -on, -one on the outside again they see one of Bellbrook safeties at the top comes up Henson keeps it and Henson maybe gets to the 30, but like we said, outside that one big run, um, Val or Bellbrook has kind of kept it in check. Henson's not scrambling a lot like we saw. It's gonna make it third and one. Henson's going to hand it off to Lynch, and Lynch I'm tried short. to go high, and the running back went low, or the defensive guy went low, and that's going to be a stop. Well, they always say low, low man wins, and a huge stop there for the Viking, or excuse me, for the Eagles. And Andy, we're getting ahead of our game for next week. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> my bad. And you know, you really got to wonder: is this is this a, a, a time where? Valley View decides to go for four, uh, go for it on fourth down. Well, the offense is on the field, They're Andy. So I, th there's... I think there's your answer right there. I say you just got to let the 40 seconds tick off and just take the penalty and punt. With with Bellbrook, with how they they're, they're tied with you, you're not up, so you don't have you can't afford these gambles. And Henson's not up at the line, and there we go. I'd say let the last 20 seconds tick off the clock. Waste more time. Two for two on penalties and one for one on uh, four down just attempts. Call me Tony Romo. I'm not out here you predicting hate plays. Tony Romo. I'm not out here predicting plays. I know I got to quit doing that. <laughs> I'm not predicting plays like he does yet, but we'll see. Yeah, I, I definitely thought that that was too risky of a move for the Spartans with with how Bellbrook has been able to catch you off guard. With the, the pass, I'd, I'd say punt this. And, I mean, your defense is only giving up two big plays like theirs has. So, I mean, I definitely agree it would have been a risky move. But with the type of confidence this Spartan team is rolling in with, you said they've outscored opponents 129 to nothing? Seven. 127 to nothing. Holy Moses, man. That is. I know it's a lot. But that's also what happens when you play uh, – opponents who's down this year and Milton Union who obviously is not the same Milton Union we've seen the last handful of years and when you're returning two of arguably your best players like Henson and Valenti who are still on the field they're still gonna, they're gonna, the gonna field. go for all right it. fourth and one here <laughs> oh. and this is some longest yard stuff and that's a first down and it, run. And it almost, it worked. It and worked. It what a run Henson, for Micah Henson Valenti. Henson walks away like Paul Crude, Adam Sandler did in Longest Yard, look confused, and there they go. What a move. I, I They fooled me, man. I thought, I thought Caden what, Henson gonna walk was away frustrated. And call that I was now? like, what is going on? And there you go. Great play call there by the offensive coordinator for the Spartans. I don't see a TV down there, and that, that that's a Madden play. I don't see anybody down there playing, calling Madden plays. Now Henson back to pass, throws it to the sideline, hauled in for a first down, and maybe gets across the 50. That is number 26 there on the catch, Anthony Valenti. 
brothers or cousins? A lot of do we, I don't know. There's, there's so many Valentis that I've That's called in 10 years, 11 years doing this. It's, it, it's a family name here in Valley View. The Valentis, the Musgraves, the Mar-a-Laga, uh, the mar a We've got so many of them. Three Valentis today, and not all of them are on Valley View. we right. got one for Delbrook, too. It's a popular name Distant in southwest cousin. Ohio. <laughs> Henson claps. He's going to follow Lynch up the middle. Henson actually going to change ways and gets about a pickup of four or five on the play. And that might be his longest run since that touchdown run. Again, yeah. Belbrook did a great job keeping him in check. And you, there's been a couple times on these. It looks like Henson, if he takes another step to that outside, he might have a lane. But that's the second time he's kind of cut back inside and, and Belbrook's there to meet him. So maybe want to see him get that confidence to get to the outside a little bit more. He might be able to pick up another long run. Coming into today's game, he had six rushes for 24 Henson yards. back to pass, stays in the pocket, throwing deep down the field, and that one is incomplete and could have almost been intercepted. Was that number six? That is number eight, five, five, Johnny. Johnny Desix. Desix, yeah. And that was absolutely sensational coverage. He was draped all over the intended wide receiver. It's kind of hard to see with the camo jerseys, but that might be 26. Isn't that the point of camo, Andy? Well, yeah, you're right. So that, that is Anthony Valenti, I believe, at the top of the screen. Bobrick brought some pressure on that last possession. Are they going to do it again here on third and long? The fake and that one's tipped up. in the air, and in, falls incomplete. And that'll be fourth and about six. Number incomplete. I think it's – nope, you're right, fourth and six. The upright was in my way. I apologize. It, it was in mine, too. I had to lean one way to see it. All right, so they're, they're not going to gamble for it here, but you gambled for it back at your 25. Well, I guess you can't say they're not gambling for it. Who knows? Maybe the punter might roll out for a pass or a run here. We got lined up punting for Valley View. It looks like. I think it might be Caden Henson. Well, look, you got Jed Lynch as the up man. Maybe he might do direct snap to him. Yeah, that was Caden Henson on the punt. And he. Let's it bounce and it goes right into the end zone. It was 82 back to return. Noah Ber uh, Berrios again. So a great defensive possession there by Bellbrook just to be able to stop the Spartans. While we're waiting for this drive to start, I have to say I've been very impressed with this being my first trip to Valley View with the crowd, how into it they are with this game. Being right above them, they've been very energetic, especially the student section. I love to see that. Well, and you know, Tony, when you win, it was, what, four titles in the 90s? 94, 95, and 97. So three titles in the 90s, and, I mean, I think they've made the playoffs almost every year since. I don't think I don't think I've Valley View's ever had a losing season since I've started doing this, and so that's at least 11 years. So, uh, Coming off a trip to the state final four last year, uh, I think a couple years ago they went to the regional finals a couple years in a row. So tradition runs deep here, and so do the fans. I mean, <laughs> you saw out here behind the stadium, they're out here um, tailgating, tailgating and barbecuing. An hour and a half before the game starts, sometimes. And what what a. I was wondering if that hit was going to knock the ball loose or not, but what a completion there to F. Epifino. Yeah, that was, I mean, I don't know how he hung on to that. He bobbled that how many times? Let's see, one, two, three, four, four five, maybe at least five. four times. I thought for sure he was going to drop it on that hit. That was a great hit by, I didn't see what number it was by the Valley View. But it may have been 16 again. Either him or maybe it was Owen Malara. He's kind of lined up in the same spot again. Split backs. Benetta is going to roll, and he is going to be sacked in the backfield for about a loss of eight at least. Yeah, and I think the Spartans saw that uh, that that play action coming the whole way. That time it was Cesar, Cesar Berryman and somebody else. Adam, Adam Dixon. There you go, Adam Dixon in to help him out. Very quick three and out. It's Berryman's second sack already of the game. He's doing a great job of getting to the quarterback. I kind of think... 
Um, um, Benettis looked like he was trying to be a screen pass, and the way the offensive line just checked out there getting downfield to try blocking, but I didn't see Epifino or Stewart really in the area. High kick, Valleyview gonna have excellent starting field position. This one returned across the 50 up to the 40, or down to the 44. That was by number two, Micah Valenti. And Ethan Sickles, number 58, and Cole Swallows, 65, and on the stop. So with just under seven minutes left, I know it's not a long field for the Spartans. Do you maybe try to play some of the clock game here and maybe take some time off? not give Bellbrook a chance to score because you get the ball to start the second half. I would at this point. The way that Bellbrook has played, especially with their pass game so far, I would not give I, I would not give them many chances if I can control it. Henson in the backfield, standing at the 50. Wide receiver split to each side. Henson looks to the right or left, throws it deep down the middle of the field, and it is hauled in by number three. Eight, Caleb Musgrove. Musgrove, yep. Caleb Musgrove. Trotting in for the touchdown, making it look easy. First and goal, Valley View. That takes it down to the two. So forget what I talked about, Tony, before that play. And they're gonna go for it, and Lynch, it looks like not gonna make it. Maybe gets to the one that might have been Lynch. I'd... Looks like maybe Valley View's doing a little more hurry up right now with them being on the one yard line. I got like the worst seat in the house where I am. I thought he, I thought he had a touchdown. It was close, Andy, it was close. <laughs> yeah, to add to the two or the one, wherever. Receiver goes in motion. Henson hands off to Lynch. Lynch spin move and might lose about know. two on the play. Yeah, it looks like he's going to get back to the three, maybe the four if he's lucky. Alex Floria, the senior, met him at the line of scrimmage. There's Micah Valenti on the carry. Oh, that was Valenti. My apologies. Oh, maybe that was Lynch who went in motion. Yes, it was. Okay. And you can see Valenti, he almost did enough to, to get the touchdown. He was able to make two guys miss on the spin move, but there was two more Eagles right there. I wouldn't be surprised if Valley View, they got with the four wide right now, they try to hit a slant route. They've got actually five wide. So this might be a Henson run up the middle. No, Henson gonna throw it out to the far and incomplete. That was Micah Valenti, the intended wide receiver, and he was frustrated on that. He was wide open. Too much pressure by Bellbrook again. They're doing a great job of bringing that pressure at times. And again, Henson just a little too quick on that release. Fourth and goal here from the three. I think you've got to keep your offense on the field. This. With your defense just had two big sacks back to back last possession. So even if you don't get it here, your defense hasn't pinned deep. Oh, and when you go for it on what? It was like they're on 30, 35? Yeah. You gotta go for it. And fourth got, and three. You got the three? You gotta get some momentum go going here. Tie ball game, league game like this. Go for the lead. And the play clock's gonna wind down, and Valley's gonna call their second timeout. Timeout, Valley. So maybe we just don't know what we're talking about. Maybe we're not Tony Romo, guys. Darn. I know I don't get paid like him. Yeah. Wait, you guys are getting paid? You got dinner. <laughs> so under five and a half left here. It's, uh, talk about, let's, if Valerie comes down and goes for it, how much momentum would this build for Bellbrook if they get this stop? Oh, I mean... I mean, so, it's kind of risk-reward. I mean, yeah, you stopped from scoring a touchdown, but you turn around and you're in your own end zone. You remember in the AFC Championship game, uh, not last year, but the year before, when the Bengals were able to stop the Chiefs right before halftime? Mm -hmm. I think it could build that type of momentum. I mean, obviously, this yeah. isn't this isn't if some Joe kind Burrow of a championship comes out in game. The second half for obviously, Bell this <laughs> isn't some kind of a championship game. But I mean, it, this could hey, be this a could massive side swing. swivel, though. Week three, and you could decide swivel between these two right now. This could be an absolutely massive swing. I mean. Caden Henson, one of the best players in the whole state. If you're able to stop this offense, averaging 60 points a game right now, able to stop them on fourth and three. 
And Valley View. There's Henson. Okay, I was about to say, I didn't see him walk out and he was, he was covered by somebody else. So one wide receiver to the top of the screen, one to the bottom, and Micah Valenti lined up in the shotgun next to Henson. Fourth and goal to three. Henson gonna take it, roll to the right, or left. Henson back in the end zone and just over the outstretch that might have been. That was I cannot see. 47 maybe? 41 or 47? We'll go with 41, Hunter Johnson. I don't have a 47 on my roster unless. So now five, five and a half minutes left here for the Golden Eagles at the three. A lot of yardage to pick up, but if, even if you can just take some time off the clock and, I mean, you prevent the Valley View from scoring, so that right there is the biggest win. Potentially going up tied at halftime or maybe up. I think the bigger concern here is you're on, you're right on your goal line and the running game has not been as great so far this quarter as Valley View gets a stop there. It looks like they're gonna get the ball out across the five. Looks nice like job giving themselves a little bit of breathing room. I thought the way Epifino was about to jump cut out, it looked like he had a hole, but Valley View wrapped him up. So pick up a three on the play. Yeah, great, Andy. You got to give yourself a little bit of space so you can get back to that passing game. And right now, when you got guys like Adam Dixon and Cesar Berryman just dominating the line of scrimmage, you got to be able to get something going. Yeah, Berryman, he's had two sacks so far in this game. He's got three on the season. It's going to be a run to the right side and get close to the 10, maybe the 9. But five tackles for loss. So even when, you know, he's not getting there for sacks, he's still stopping guys in the backfield. He's, he's all over the place really early in the season to have five tackles for a loss it's gonna make it third and about three here this would be a time for Bellbrook to they have both of their passing touchdowns that came on third and I don't think it was third and long but it, it wasn't like this either I mean you could easily have Bonettis maybe roll out the first one Bellbrook and I think is gonna have to burn a timeout Leaves each team with one. And this is exactly where they kind of want to be. I mean, we, we talked about how they don't want third and longs, got to keep it third and manageable. Third and three, and that's that's less that's more like third and short, you know. Isn't Triple it option wonderful team. when your keys to the game play out. I know, right? It's like you know what you're talking about, Jared. I I, I do for this game so far. So we'll see what does Bellbrook dial up here on third and three at their own 10. Kind of little movement by either side. I mean, Bellbrook's still lined up here in the Back in the backfield, they should have started the play clock by now. Got to announce the game and run, run referee for them too, I guess. Maybe he's got a lot of guys up front. Third and three, Benettis pitch out to the far side and he did not get it. I don't even think he got back to the line of scrimmage. Is that Stewart with the run? No, that was number three, Jake Lopez. And no other than Micah Valanti getting the stop defensively. Got his helmet down with a great open field tackle there on Stewart. That's a big stop for Valley View. Give yourself the ball back with probably about three and a half, three minutes to play here. You have a chance to possibly go up right before halftime. But definitely a win defensively for the Spartans on the three and out. All right, so got a couple more scores from around the area. We're going to go back to Centerville, where their lead has been cut 8-3. to three. Uh, Pickerington Central hit a 43-yard field goal. And then over to West Carrollton, where the Pirates have cut the lead to 1. It is 7-6. Uh, Kevin Davis connected 
with uh, Antonio Robinson for a touchdown. They went for two, didn't get it. So one point lead for the Skyhawks? Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Sometimes that risk versus reward doesn't pay off. We'll have to see if it comes that, back that to bite the That makes you got to go for two next time. Mm -hmm. So three, 14 left here in the first half. Valley View at their own 36 yard line after a very high punt by the Golden Eagles. Great field possession for Valley View out here. Henson lined up in shotgun, claps for the ball. Gonna hand it off up the middle. A spin move for a first down and inside the 25 down to about the 22. Valenti's gonna pick up another first down. He's really starting to get things going on the ground. Third down, Valley at 23. Valley View right back up on it. Valenti gets the handoff again. Valenti, nice jump cut there once he saw the hole was plugged, but not really able to go anywhere after it. Okay, two, Number 89, Jude, Jude Omatek in on the stop. Normally you pass those ones off to me. Yeah, well, you know, got to give them a try every once in a while. Two and a half minutes left here. Henson. Drop back, quick pass to the outside. We'll have the first down, broke a tackle inside the 10. And finally about four or five more Golden Eagles team up for the tackle. That is Anthony Valenti this time. Gonna get him inside the 10, down to the seven. So the Eagles are able to come up with a big stop last time around. Are they going to be able to do it again? First and goal from the seven here. And Henson looks like he's trying to argue with the ref that the play clock should have reset or something. But no, five seconds left. Preston Pettit was the guy to make the stop. Henson's going to keep this one rolled to the left. Henson has a hold of the outside. Henson at the five and doesn't have to dive. He's in. It was a foot race, and it was awfully close that time, but he was able to make it. Number four was in pursuit. Gavin McConnell, but not quite fast enough for the star quarterback. I do have a score update for you guys over in Cincinnati at halftime. LaSalle is up on the Fairmont Firebirds 14 to nothing. Okay, defense kind of holding in. It could be a lot worse there for the Firebirds. Do we know Last who year. got the ball first? I do not. Twitter does not right. tell me that. All right. Sorry, X does not tell me that. Right, I was about I'm to say, still hold calling on. it Twitter. I don't care. Andy, don't get us canceled for not, not calling it what it is. I don't think Elon's <laughs> going to sue us. I think he's got bigger problems. He's trying to take us to Mars, guys. So 21 to 14, a minute 40 left here in the first half. Lead here for the Spartans. So I know I don't want to call it the play of the game for college football in week one, but did either of you see that Nebraska touchdown? The bounce pass. The bounce pass bobbled it and threw, still rifled it in there wide open? Yes, I was disgusted watching that game. <laughs> I didn't. I, I took Nebraska with the points, so I won. It was, it was rough. I think seven turnovers or something absurd like that. Yeah, Nebraska had, I think, five four, themselves. Four of them. I think four. they had four. Okay. But Minnesota won that game there, right? Yeah, 13 yeah. to 10. Yeah. Come back. I think it's the 26th straight one possession game, 27th straight one possession game that Nebraska's lost in a row. I really thought they were going to break that last night. But then that late fumble, was it? A, I think it was a late fumble. Yeah, it was a fumble. And there was an. I know there was an interception. And there was an interception. Yeah, the interception yeah. set up the golden or the golden Gophers. For the field goal to win it, yeah. But hey, I'm happy. I said it would be under 25, and I took Nebraska with the points, so there I made go. out. How come you never send me your winning bets? I'm wondering the same thing. I don't know. I don't. I make them. I, like I like I told you one about um, Iowa take Utah State with the points. I had I had to use. A profit bet that quick I, I had to use it and i was like that's the only thing i didn't i didn't really i saw a stat and i went with it good utah state 
with points over Iowa? 25. All right, so number 35, Brayden Bell on the kickoff. Iowa averaged only 20 points a game last year. So they didn't cover the spread a lot of games. Yeah, but who did I tell you that, that they went and got? They got McNamara from Michigan. Yeah, I think that's going to make their offense. I mean, I'm not saying that they're going to be scoring 40 points a game or anything, but they're going to score no, a they, could, they could just They could win 10 to nothing for all I care, but they didn't cover the spread. <laughs> Iowa's one of those teams that can beat you real slow-paced football and, you know, Holding you to 14 nothing Kinda final like scores. What we've seen out of the Firebirds out of the last couple of years when they had their dominant running game in that defense. Mm -hmm. They win you, beating you on the ground. Here's going to be a handoff to, I believe, is that Epifano? Yes, sir. Pickup of about three on the play. 54, Caden Hardley, or Hadley, and on the stop for the Spartans. Be curious if Bilbert goes back to their pass game here with just about a minute left in the right for the half. It's worked so far, but they haven't really gone to it recently. And right that one on cue, Tony. In. At about the maybe they might get him out to the 42, out to the 43. There's Johnny Desick. Clock keeps running though. We're down to 50 seconds now. You have a timeout of here, sir. The Eagles. I would have. I would have definitely used it. Now you've let 15 seconds run off. Well, the third and th especially with it being a third down, give yourself a chance to, to come up with something here. I think this play is going to decide whether Benetis they call that timeout. Looking to air it out, middle Over of the through. field. Receiver gets through and just out of the outstretched arms to number, is that, is that Barrios? 82. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and I, like I was just saying, I think that now that they didn't pick it up, they don't want to leave, you know, 50 seconds on the clock for Valley View. More or less, just, you know, they, they'll... They would have still had 30 some odd seconds had Barrios been able to catch that and not scored. So that still would have been plenty of time from, it would have been around the 20. And, you know, I think it's just so smart not doing everything you can to not give Valley View extra time. So I, I like the decision to not call the timeout but until a, before, a until little, after that play. A little more finesse on that. Barrios had both those Valley View defenders beat. That was another house call potentially. So I, I, I saw a slight tug at the shoulder pad from one of the Valley View defenders. I don't know, maybe not enough to get called for a pass interference, but. Football's a physical sport, Jared. Hey, you at least, um, you saw Barrios talk to one of the refs going off the sideline. Hey, you point out the jersey tug, they'll look for it in the second half. So Luke Benenis, also the punter for the team. So he was out there to kick that one away. Right, gonna get so is Caden Henson, 20. the punter for Valley View. Two, two, two for two for quarterbacks that also are, have good feet as well as punters and running the ball. Yeah. So 24 seconds left, a timeout for Valley View. Who are we going deep to on this first play? I'm taking the knee, especially if you've got the ball to come out second half. No, no reason to do anything foolish here. Yeah, it and looks like they like agree with Tony. Up. Why? Because you saw it on cat on TV. I'm gonna say yeah. I'm watching. Hey, if, you're, if you're here, if you're Bellbrook, you just just to be petty, call your last timeout. But no, both teams are gonna go to the locker room, let the final seconds tick off, and Valley View with a seven-point lead, 21 to 14, over the Golden Eagles at the half. We're gonna toss it down to the bands and then we'll be back for the second half of our MVCC game of the week for week number three.
now entering the field, the Valley View High School Marching Band. The band is under the direction of Joseph Jacobs and Chandler Swap. The 2023 Spartan Marching Band is led onto the field by drum major Isabel Orozco. This evening's halftime performance is entitled, It's My Life. It's My Life is a story of walking your own path in life and those that enter and leave your life along the way. The songs selected for It's My Life are It's My Life by Bon Jovi, I Bet My Life by Imagine Dragons, and The Best Day of My Life by the American Authors. The Valley View High School Marching Band would like to thank the entire community for your continued support, and we hope that you enjoy this evening's halftime performance. Isabella Rosco, is the band ready? The Valley View High School Marching, the High School Spartan Marching Band is a, proud to present It's My Life.
gentlemen, let's hear it for the Valley View Marching Band. Yeah. Welcome back as we get ready to kick off the second half of our MVCC game of the week for week number three. Valley View currently up 21 to 14 over the Dubbert Golden Eagles. Andy, you want to run down some of our other scores right before we get ready? All right, so the only score that we don't have is Miami's bird over opponents, but I mean. I, I mean, I think that's a lot to a little. Yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd say so. So then when we go ahead and we look at our other scores, we got Milton Union up 14 to seven over Oakwood. Uh, Fairborn there over top of the Pirates, uh, 14 to six. Elder, 21 to nothing at halftime over the Panthers. LaSalle, 14 to seven over Fairmont. And then finally, Pickerington Central up nine to eight. That's a weird one, maybe a score Um Pickerington Central over Centerville. 28-6, And as we get ready to start this second half, it will be Valley View's ball to start. What has Bellbrook done right in this game to keep it a one-score game? Well, one of the keys to the game was getting out of the first quarter. So they did that. It was it was either 7-7 seven, seven or 14-14. Fourteen, fourteen. And uh, so they, they did a good job not just getting, you know, hit with an avalanche early. They've, they've kept things pretty manageable on uh, third downs. Um, and, you know, they've, they've scored on, on fourth downs uh, or on third downs both, both times, which, you know, a little surprising co considering both of them were long pass plays. So, um, yeah, they, they've done a pretty good job there. And then, uh, Tony, well, what have they good, done well on the defensive end? Well, I want to add offensively, too. We didn't really talk about it in the pregame, but, I mean, the fact that they got both their touchdowns on the passing plays, they're mixing it up, and it's forcing Valley View to have to respect both that pass and run game. Defensively, I think they've done a better job once that big first run by Henson of keeping him in check. And really, like, Valley View hasn't had a lot of explosive plays as I, I, I expected to see. So they're doing a good job of keeping their offense in check, too. It's going to be a matter of can they do it for 24 more minutes. Bellbrook boots this one away, and Valley View will, will actually get a chance to return this one. The first time we get to see a return, Valley View cuts it up across the 35, out to the 40, and I think he's at four for his knee will be down at about the, the 37, maybe. Tanner Stewart, the man who's there to get the stop 
for the Eagles coming out of halftime. That's a great way to start the half, though. Good field position for the Spartans. I'm going to get the ball at the 37-yard line. One time the kicker doesn't put it in the end zone, and they start at about the 35, 36. Brody Morris, the kicker, number 84. Doing a good job so far here today. It's a weird number for a kicker. The yeah. end around. Looked like there was a big hole and then it filled up quickly. Is that number eight? That is Caleb Musgraves. I think he might have been tackled by Jaden Wheatley for the Eagles. Pick up a seven on the place, a nice first down or first play to run there out of the halftime. And this right here can really be a key possession for either team as the Eagles are able to get a stop. A nice, nice chance for them to be able to even things up. And Henson back to pass, going to roll it. Tuck it, cuts out to the outside, has the first down. Henson still on his feet at the 40. Henson breaks another tackle. Henson bounces to the outside. And Henson finally tackled at about the 25. Cutting back and forth, Caden. Henson doing everything for this team. We just talked about how the, how the Eagles did a good job, you know, stopping him from getting big runs after the first play. But then right there, huge play. There is laundry on the field, and I believe it's an unsportsmanlike conduct maybe. I saw a shove after the play. All right, a looks like hold. they're going to call it a hold. Is that block in the back block or hold? Back. Legal block in the back. Block, block in the back against the Spartans, and that, that erases a huge run there by and, Caden Henson. And I'll tell you what, man, the Eagles got lucky that they didn't get hit with, with, with like I said, an unsportsmanlike conduct. At the end of the play, Caden, when Caden Henson got up, maybe they didn't throw the flag because Caden Henson said something, which, which uh, uh, then got the retaliatory push. Um, but one of their one of the defenders kind of lost his temper for a second with Caden Henson, and that could have cost him. Well, you know, you got a high emotional game here again when you got a touchdown difference, and you know you're still in the third quarter, and a lot of people probably thought Valley V was going to come in here and win this game by quite a large margin. You know, for Bellbrook, it's emotional as you're in a close game and you want to keep it close. But like you said, Andy, you got to keep your head, especially in these tighter moments as we get deeper into the game. Lynch in motion, hands off, go to Valenti. First down run, Valenti powers through. Valenti across the 40, down to about the 36. And not quite as exciting of a run there, but still very effective. Valenti cutting through the line, making a man miss, and getting his way out to the 37. Your cash lanes for you. <clears throat> Henson ready. Lynch in motion. Valenti gets the carry again. Valenti bursts through and gets through about the initial line and then tackled for a gain of three. Now there's injured player down. Jonathan Arden, number 61. Eagle who's able to make the stop and I believe he might have had help from number nine Gavin Thobe. Looks like Jed Lynch is the injured Spartan on the field currently. Oh and that could be absolutely huge. huge he's there for he's the, one of the better offensive players here for the Spartans. Oh, we've called his name quite a few times on defense too. Kind of playing in that middle linebacker kind of taping out to the safety position. Hopefully just a cramp for Jed as he gets attended to by the athletic training staff at Valley View. And he's up walking off under his own power. At first it looked pretty gingerly, but now he looks to be pretty okay. So hope it's not, hopefully maybe just a cramp. That or possibly like a rolled ankle, but you know, again, that's what's nice about these high school football athletes is sometimes you watch them go down and you think it's worse than it is, but these guys are well conditioned and able to bounce back from pretty much anything. Well, it was like a game we did last year. It's actually the Fairmont LaSalle game we did at Roush Stadium last year. There was this 
safety for the Firebirds that was carried off the field by his teammates. Comes back in and has the game sealing interception in the end zone. And the Paul Pierce treatment. So it will be second and seven. Clock, play clock is down to 10. I don't know if Valavie realizes that or not. Play clock is down to five. Valley gets it off right at one. Hand off up the middle goes maybe to the line of scrimmage. With Jacob Uma and Jake Lopez, the two Eagles there to make the stop. That's the second time Umina has, as that linebacker spot has been that first contact. He's doing a great job of filling that hill hole very quickly and getting stops on Lynch on that previous possession and then Valenti there. Third and seven here, big for both sides. Henson back to pass, throws it in the middle of the field, and that is incomplete. In and out of the hands intended to. Caleb Musgrove. So it'll be fourth and seven. And I just saw before that last play, Lynch was down here, he ran from end zone to end zone. Doesn't look like he's gonna be out of this game for long. Yeah, I think I see him down there on the bench. He's just gonna tie that thing up a little tighter and get back out there. So big fourth down here for Valley View. You're, you're in that kind of that no man's land where you don't know if you're a little too far for a field goal, but you've got the momentum. You've gone down this far on the field. Why not keep it and see if he can't punch it in and make this a double digit game? Play clock is down to three. Delay game. No, they just get it off. Henson going to roll to the right, throws it down the middle of the field, and it is incomplete, and there's a penalty flag comes in late. That's going to be a pass interference on the Eagles intended to Musgrove, and Musgrove almost was able to come through the defender and make that catch. So that's going to move them to about the 20. And that's a tough call there for Gavin Thobe, number nine. He was there on the coverage, and it wasn't bad coverage. Just his head was turned I guess around. He gets he there a little early, and anytime you get there a little early and you don't have your head turned, they're going to call that every time. It's going to be just inside the 20-yard line now. And that's one thing that this Valley View team doesn't need. They don't need you to go ahead and, and give them a, give them any help. And you know, when you have them stopped on fourth and and long, and then you, you give up a, a long penalty like that, that that's that can be really deflating. First and ten from the 18 now, so Valley View can get a, another first down without a touchdown. Henson's going to keep this one. Henson oh. tripped right as he went through. That one might have been the turf monster. He had a hole too. If he had not gotten tripped up there by Belbrook or the turf monster, he that might have been a house call. Well, we're gonna maybe take a look at the replay here. See Henson there, number five, left of your screen. Takes the carry up the middle and oh, maybe he like might have tangled feet. I think it was Valenti he just got tangled up with. Mm -hmm. Henson's going to keep this one again. Henson bursts through. Henson at the 10. Powers through. Henson high stepping and rolls inside the five. I really thought he was going to high step out of that. And maybe if his teammate wasn't rolling over from the block, he might have got in. And he's so good. And, and man, after, like I said earlier, he came into the night with only 24 rushing yards on the season. He's got over 100. He might have over 124 on, on the night. He's been absolutely spectacular. And we always talk about all the damage he does through the air, making things happen, but, you know, he's he's just as deadly running the ball. He's smart when running the ball. He, he doesn't do it every play, so you're not going to expect it. And Henson going to hand this one off. Gets inside the five, turned around, maybe gets down to the four. I believe that's Musgrove on the carry. Johnny Desick in on the stop. First man there. 
the other thing with Henson is he's got great size for a quarterback at six foot three. You know, he's not he's a lot taller than a lot of Bell Brooks linebackers and, and oh, DB. No, so you're able to have that extra momentum as you're running when he is getting up the field like he is. Timeout called here by the Golden Eagles with seven and a half minutes left. It's second and goal from the four. Trying to figure out what, how to stop and at least maybe either hold for a field goal chance or at this, at this play, it's four down territory. Uh, the way Valley View has played this game, this is 100% four down territory. And they've able, they've been able to stop them once in the red zone. You know, they're the, I guess first time right before halftime, and uh, you know it's going to be interesting to see if they can do that again. They showed a lot of intestinal fortitude there, in that first stop. If they can do it again, it'd be huge. Give them a great shot to win this game. Is that the word of the day on the calendar, Andy? Maybe it is. I don't know. <laughs> I think down inside the five, if you're Bellbrook, you got to think, I mean, we've seen Henson attack the last two, or the two of the last three plays. It's kind of just been hidden one way going right up the middle. So maybe if you're the Eagles, you got to block that middle and they're kind of spread out there. Man in motion, Henson going to roll to the left and Henson's going to be in untouched. The quarterback keeper, I believe that's his first rushing touchdown of the season. It's a second. I was say. He had the long run in the first half yeah, there. That first touchdown oh, for yeah. Valley View was the 80 yarder, Andy. <laughs> and kind of like as I just pointed out, I mean, the, there was nobody over there for the Eagles, and then the one receiver brought him over in motion, and it just walked in untouched. Great design there by the Spartans. Kick is up and kick is through and good. And a double digit lead now here for the uh, Spartans. But we're finally going to see Bellworks answer now. And trailing by two scores. If you're Bellbrook, you might have to lean a little bit more heavy on this pass, at least to get it to a one score game. And you know, Jared, one thing that I'm always super impressed with about Valley View is the, the pro style offense they run and how it doesn't matter year to year. Like every every year, it doesn't matter who the quarterback is. They're always, you know, they, they always are effective on the offensive side of the ball. And before it was Caden Henson, it was it was Brumball, wasn't it? No, that was Milton Union. It, was, it went rivals with it, but it, hold on, let me get his name. It, but it was another four year starter for the Spartans. But these guys always have playmakers all over the field. I mean, and we talk about how how great their football culture is here. 30 years of, of winning. I mean, they, they've been winning longer than, than I've been around. So definitely an impressive culture that they have here in Germantown. It was Cade Cradleball before him. Cradleball, yeah, there you go. Something about these Valley View kids, man. They always have great names. Spartans on to kick this one off. Short kick again. Some fielded right at about the 25. Cuts it back up and runs right into all of his blocking. This is a big possession for Bellbrook. And keep in mind, this is their first possession of the half. They just spent the first five and a half, excuse me, four and a half minutes watching. Uh, that's game time that they've been watching Valley be with the football. They haven't they, had the ball yeah, for quite some time. Too. You hope that during that time they were staying loose, especially Benettis, because again, they're going to probably have to lean on that pass game when you're down. 14 points in, in this type of situation. And then it's going to take this one handed off. And that one's going back where and he gets hit out at about the at the 34 maybe. That was, was that Makai Smith? That was Makai Smith okay. on that first run. First time I think we've really called his name tonight. No, he had, a, he had that touchdown reception in the first half. Okay. Not much room on that possession. They lost a yard on that run. And they're going to mark him down at the 33. 
and you know Val or Pelbrook's kind of been working this to the outsides and all that, but if you're Valerie, you gotta watch out. This could be maybe a Benettis run up the middle, or I'll, I'll take a delayed handoff to- Good counter on that. With, uh, was that Epifano? That, that was Stewart. Stewart on that Stewart. one, Tanner Stewart on that. We've called his name quite a bit this game. Did a great, does a pretty good job of getting that. He's not going to explode for big yardage, but he can get you a couple yards here and there, and that's what you need. Just chip away at it in that last possession there, giving him six yard gain. Third and five here. If you're Bellbrook, nothing negative because, I mean, you could put yourself into four down territory. Benettis back to pass. Benettis rolling to the right. Benettis throws it downfield and it is hauled in. Noah Barrios there on the reception. That's across the 50 out to about the 43. Phenomenal job by Barrios there to be patient and get open. Wasn't open right away. Cut to that sideline. Gabriel Benettis an option and a huge first down for Bellbrook there. Yeah, and there was a good coverage there on the play, too. I'm not quite sure who it was, but he was very close. It, it, was, it was a tough, contested catch. Benetta's back to pass again, throws a quick to the outside. That'll be another first down catch for the Eagles. And that is Berrios yet again, right there at the sticks. And if you're Bellbrook, I, I kind of like this hurry up offense they're kind of running. You don't want Valley View to get set. Pick up of about 11 on the play. Benettis fakes the handoff to Smith. Benettis throws it in and it is intercepted at the 10. And then goes down at about the 22. I did not see who got that. Is it 26? That might be Anthony Valenti. We're going to take a look at it here. Got to wait for him to roll over and get up. I think I followed him all the way to the sideline. I believe that was Anthony Valenti there. Great job there by the young defensive back. Big stop for Valley View there. Big stop. That's after two big passing plays, the Eagles. And this is where, you know, Valley View really starts to break people's backs when, when their offense just, you know, they just keep producing all game long. They make it so hard for the other team. I mean, part of it is just a, is just kind of like pressure, right? Like one, one of the things that made the Here's Golden State goal Warriors. Turns back around the other side of the field, breaks another tackle, blocking out to the front. Henson out front with a block. He's going to cut back in across the field and get out to about the 46. Caleb think, Musgrove, that, I believe. Musgrove? Yes, he's getting up slow, hopping off the field. But I was just about to say, one of the things that made the Golden State Warriors so hard to beat when they had KD is it was just relentless pressure. You always had to score, always had to do something to be able to you know, keep up with that offense. And it's almost the same thing with this Valley View team. I mean, they just always coming at you, never stopping. I know the way, I mean, that whole run, I don't maybe if we can get another replay of that. But it's just the way that Valent or Musgrove, sorry, was running and just about face turned and shot across the other side of the field and then did it again. I mean, that's like a Plinko chip going down the, uh, the Plinko board. The price is right. The way he just switched. I mean, you see how they shoot one side to the other and you see he gets up, walks off under his own pressure. And you saw he, he was kind of trying to hop himself off the field and the coach was like, no, just go down, take the timeout. I loved your basketball analogy of the Warriors, by the way, there, Andy. Thank you. I would go as far as say, you know, on the NFL, you look at the NFL side, kind of like the Kansas City Chiefs as well, with guys like Patrick Mahomes and all the weapons he has, that type of offense that when you've got so many guys that can make plays for you, you're able to depend on that offense and know, hey, they're going to get the job done. And that's, that, I'm sure that Valley View defense there on the, on the sideline knows that Caden Henson and this offense is going to take care of business. They've been doing a very good job, especially this half, moving the ball. Henson back to pass, takes a three-step drop, rolls to the right, throws it down the middle of the field, and that one is going to be just oh. out of the outstretched arms of Jed Lynch. Lynch. Oh, Lynch came back in. All right. 
Yeah, they retaped that ankle on the sideline, and he got back out there. So, Tony, you brought up the NFL. So, going into week one, pre or just before the season thoughts, give us a Super Bowl matchup. Oh, man, you're putting me on the spot on this one. I have to. I'm going to go 49ers out of the NFC. AFC, I usually don't go with my hometown team because I don't want to be biased, but I think, this, I think the Bengals, they can stay healthy. I think they're going to be able to get it done out of the AFC this year. And you, know. you want to have any comments then? Well, you know, like yes. on Henson, old on Henson keeps this one, and I don't know why he's. Oh, Henson breaks it and then fall jumps yeah, forward. Smart decision to just take the loss, not not get hit and just go down there. But uh, loss of about four. But well, on play by play this week, we got to finish up our uh, our season like predictions preview, and you know, our, ours was a little different. We had the Bengals and the Lions. The Lions. All right, look, man, we we went through, picked every game all season long, and that's just how things shook out. So, you know, I I was a big a big believer in the Lions last year. I don't know if I really got them going to the Super Bowl. Like when when you step back in, in a grander scale and look at things, but. You know, definitely a playoff team this year, in my Henson opinion. Henson going to tuck this one, run up the middle. Henson evades one tackle and hit in the back at about the 48-yard line. It's going to bring a fourth down and about seven or eight. Preston Valenti, the other Valenti, out there this time for the stop number 41 for the Eagles. So you're not a big fan of that Lions pick, Tony? I'm I'm not a fan of that at all, guys. I'm not gonna lie I, to you. I I and it's like Andy said. I mean, I, I I like Dan Campbell. I like what they're doing. I like this resurgence by Jared Goff. Prove that Jeff Fisher didn't ruin a good quarterback. But no, I I kind of like. I mean, we've talked about it all season, Andy, with the or all week on our show. The Niners just kind of have like the perfect roster. It seems like, and really, who did, like they hit, whoever they have a quarterback, it's they can run that offense when you got C Mac and Debo Samuel and Kittle. So Barrios is going to get that ball out to it looks like about the 17 yard line. And yeah, you know, I, so I'm going to I'm going to change our pick from the show. All right, and I think it's going to be the third times the charm. The Bengals finally win their Super Bowl, and they're going to go get it against the Niners. You know, when, when Tony made the Niners pick, I was going to say that's going to that's gonna cause a lot of older Bengals fans to have some nightmares. Uh, but, um, you know, ideally, that, that's that's what it looks like to me. My my biggest question, man, it, it all comes down to Brock Purdy. Or it, is it not going to be Brock Purdy? Is it going to be – is is Sam Darnold going to end up taking over by the end of the season? I don't know. I think that quarterback room is a real question there in, in San Francisco. Because Brock Purdy, he didn't do anything to lose them games last year. But in my opinion, he also wasn't exceptional. So we'll have to see if, if he's if he's good enough, or if if you know their quarterback room in general is good enough to be able to get them back to the promised land. As long as Sam Darnold doesn't see any ghosts here in San Francisco, I think we're going to be okay. I think it's his coach that's going to be causing people to see ghosts. Speaking of NFL, you know one of the things I'm thinking about as this game goes on is some of the best quarterbacks you see in the NFL now: Joe Burrow, Patrick Mahomes, Jalen Hurts. They're able to not only dominate on the ground but with their arm as well. And Caden Henson, I think, has done a really good job of showing us, especially that last possession, that bomb he threw down the field. You know, we've seen him with his feet, what he can do. We've seen him hit those short passes. We've seen him under pressure, and then that bomb—that's exactly what you want in today's world. Quarterback is the guy that can. Beat you deep, beat you short, beat you on the ground. Vincent Epifino get, got them to a third and six on that play. And, yeah, I completely agree. You know, that I, I sound like a broken record a lot because how much we talk about Caden Henson. But, you know, just, just the ability of, of, of these great quarterbacks to be able to control games. He's, he's another one. And, yes, he's not at the same caliber as, as those other guys. But at the high school Benetis level. carrying it out along the sideline. And incomplete. Barrios was the intended target. They've been going to him a lot here in this I was third about to quarter. Say, I think if they want to try to get back into this game, you've got to go somewhere else because they're double teaming Barrios. As you see here, nice follow by our replay camera. Okay. Well, not only are they, is, is he getting a double coverage, but Valley View is dropping more guys back now than bringing into the box. They're definitely daring Bellbrook to beat them over the top. 
Anthony Valenti and Owen Marlara were the guys there in double coverage. And you know that that's the that's one of the really tough things when when you're a team that primarily runs the ball. You know, after you get down a couple scores, it, it kind of shows your hand to the Al defense. Almost could have been a turnover there for the. Spartans bobbled pickup. Jed Lynch nearly gave that one away. Great job by Gavin Thobe, though, the junior, to commit to that and, and hang with uh, the return there. If that would have been a, a muffed punt, that might have been a nice little recovery for the junior. And that definitely could have swung this game in the other direction. Did you hear Coach P.J. Flex say last night that he doesn't believe in momentum? I did not. He said that at halftime and then in the post-game press conference. So, something interesting. I kind of don't agree with that. Coaches often <laughs> preach about momentum. But, I mean, he, he's coaching in the college level. So, I mean, he's got that on us. He, but, I mean. He must know something we don't. I don't know. I mean, he, he lives by that paddle, paddle that canoe. And, I mean, that, that takes a lot of momentum to paddle a canoe. <laughs> so. Henson, the keeper, going to make one guy miss. All out across oh. the 45. He's still he's churning. his feet. Still churning, and it's going to take five Eagles to, to be able to stop him. You know who else paddles a canoe quite well? The Cincinnati Reds. Especially Mr. Ellie De La Cruz. I don't want to talk about baseball. We're in football season now, Tony. Hey, i tell you what, I really love the, the pickup of, of Hunter Renfro and Harrison Bader yesterday. I think that's that's nice nice move showing that that the Reds, you know, they a lot of people they weren't very happy because the Reds didn't do a lot at the at the um, trade deadline. A lot, they did but nothing. They went and they got the one pitcher from. They got Sam Mall and he's been turned out good, but there's a run up the middle for maybe a gain of. That is enough for a first down. But so, it might not be good enough in most Reds fans' eyes, but you know, showing that they're willing to spend a little bit of money to try and compete, I guess. And by most Reds fans, we're talking about Mr. Bergstrom here as yeah. one of those. Yeah, if you're friends with him on Facebook, I'm sure you see him complaining about. It's the, just one person about, about, about Andy David and Bell. Everybody knows quite often. my hatred for David Bell. Well, you're gonna have to keep hating him for a little while longer. Because how long was that extension? Three years. I don't understand. Speaking of extended, let's see if Valley View can extend this drive here. Is, uh, is that it's going to be enough for a fir or about a gain of five, sorry, on the first down run. Micah Valenti there. I would not be at all surprised with where we're at in this game if we see Valley View really just run the football as much as they can, especially in this fourth quarter. Don't even give Belbrick a chance to possess the, the football. And when you got a guy like Caden Henson and Micah Valenti that are making the plays like they are, just keep running, running that ball and churning that clock. And it looks like is that Valenti might get that carry. Yeah. Shorty oh, yard. Musgrove, sorry. Oh, nice to see Musgrove come back in after he Walked off the field injured. Yeah. And if Valley be smart, they might just let this one run out. No sense in trying to run up for it on third down. Give yourself time to talk about it. Third and less than a yard. So, I mean, it's not much to talk about. You just line up and push your offensive line through. So, that one looks like it's going to do it for the third quarter of our MVCC game of the week for week number three. Bellevue adds a touchdown to extend the lead to two scores, 28 to 14. Kind of living us, leaving us on a cliffhanger here because this all, how Bellbrook gets back into this game depends on what they do on these next two plays coming into the fourth quarter. They got to find a rhythm in that pass game again. It worked in the first half, hasn't been there that third quarter. That's the key, I think, for that fourth quarter here, Jared and Andy, is we got to see the Golden Eagles be able to convert. It, it, it's got to be somebody else than um, Noah Berrios because, I mean, you saw Valley View being able to get back and send and double team him, and um, Benettis tried to feed it in there a couple times, got one to go in there, but it's 
you got to find somebody else. Yeah, they only have two or three wide receivers that have caught passes today. Uh, Micah Smith and I believe Epifino may have gotten one. So, you know, they don't have that many options on the offensive end. Not a lot of guys that are going to go out there and make plays. And um, I don't even know if those are listed as receivers. I think those are backs. I was going to say, yeah, th those are running backs. But so before we start the fourth quarter, got some scores from around the league. It is still 14 to 6 uh, for uh, the, the Skyhawks over. Uh, West Carrollton, and then we go down to Cincinnati. LaSalle still up 14 to nothing. Elder, uh, it is 28 to seven with about three minutes remaining in that game. And then the other score I was able to find 18 to nine, Centerville leading Pick Central. So they're definitely working on a scoregami there. Pick Central is one of those football teams. They don't go away very easily, though. We saw that last week against Wayne, so glad to see the Elks taking care of business. But obviously, huge run up the middle there. That one is Micah Valenti. That is going to be enough for a first down. That is so big right there, able to continue this drive and just continue to milk that clock. Uh, Oakwood was able to tie it up a minute ago into the third quarter. Jacks and Bulldogs tied at 14. All right, so that's one to keep an eye on here in the swivel. We'll be back here in a few weeks again for the Lumberjacks and Spartans rivalry. Big hole. And that's going to be a huge run inside the 20. Valenti once again, and, you know, the body shots are just starting to add up. For, for the Eagles. And Tony, you mentioned this before we came on air. You can tell the size difference when you just look along the sidelines and, and in the warm-ups and everything, how much bigger the the Valley View players are than, than over on the other sideline. Yeah, a lot of those linebackers and DBs, at least from up here for Bellbrook, it looks like they're just undersized. So. You know, things like things like that, it, 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 it makes a difference. Henson throws it left in the back of the end zone, incomplete. And I think a flag might have come out. Yeah, pass interference on that one. And there's not going to be many times I disagree with where Caden Henson's going to throw the ball as the wide receiver is going to come up hobbling. Is that Lynch again? Uh, that looks like that's Caleb Musgrove. Or Musgrove, okay. I was just about to say, Jared, Kay, uh, Jed Lynch was streaking wide open across the middle of the field. He ran like a slant and, you know, he he didn't get to the, uh, um, Caden Henson didn't have time to get to that read. He decided he'd go with the first read. And like I said, I think I think Jed Lynch would have had a touchdown. That's going to put it first and goal at the, the right at the 10. So that be showing they're not afraid to take a shot in the pass game here in the red zone. Do you think we're going to see that again, or do you think we're going to stick to the run game here again? I, I, up, up two scores, I think you're comfortable throwing the ball here, at least maybe on this play. Because, I mean, ultimately, if you, you get up three scores, you can – Henson, well, the Henson's keeper. going to keep it. Henson puts a stiff arm at the 10. Gets inside the five. And you know, at this point, I would almost, you know, not be running the ball with Caden Henson anymore. Up two scores, mm -hmm. less than 11 minutes left in the game. I would just try and, you know, not let him pick up any more hits. He's the most important player on this team. He goes down. That, that could be a season changer. And it could be. And if you're Valley View, you kind of mark this on your schedule. This and Brookville are kind of your two tougher opponents out of swivel in your in your season to play. So you get out of this one and you score again, I I wouldn't even expect C.K. Henson to get field. If you get a 21-point lead, if they can score on this possession, I I would be surprised if Valenti or Henson. It's going to be a keeper for Henson. Keep it. Henson's going to Henson's going to. He's in again. I think he might have got tackled into the end zone. <laughs> and so we were expecting to see Caden Henson dominate the game by throwing the ball. He's been doing that, but he's been scoring all of his touchdowns on the ground. That's his third of the game. The shiftiness of the quarterback. And yeah, you see right there. Look like number 41 for the 
Uh, that was Preston Valenti. Looked like he knocked him in about two yards into the end zone. The wrong Valenti pushed him into the end zone there. I think he might get some grief in that in practice this week, film study. Yeah, the Spartans are the camo. This to put the Spartans up 35 Spartans to 14. Kick is up and kick is good. 21 point lead now here for the Spartans. Kind of interesting now. Belbrook kind of have to abandon that run game. You're going to have to probably go to check. It'll have to be checked down to your receivers because you've only got one receiver listed that we've seen be able to do anything. So we'll see what Benetis can do being put in a passing situation here. Bellbrook only thrown the ball 25 times coming into tonight's game. And I mean, we don't have the live stats, so I'm not sure where they are, but they, they gotta be getting close to that number by now. I would say at this point, if Bellbrook cannot answer with a touchdown on this possession, Valley, I agree with you guys. I don't think you're going to see Henson or Valenti or some of these other starters, but more importantly, I don't think you're going to see Valley View throw the ball any more this game. I think that that pass interference in the end zone is probably the last time we're going to see Ken Kate Henson put the ball in the air tonight. And I think that would be a good decision considering Musgrove. It looked like, you know, he, he was hobbling off the field. They've had a couple of their big time playmakers get hurt here in the second half so I think that'd be really smart just take most of them out and, and just hey on, on the next week guys well if you boots this one away it's number 17 on the carry Jacob Blankenship it's knocked out at about the 29 got a final from Elder Springboro loses 28 to 7 Springboro gonna fall to 0 and 3 on the year I think there's a lot of questions for the Panthers coming in this year after losing a veteran quarterback that they had. I'm drawing a blank on his name, but Evan you got Ruzo. Evan Ruzo, and now you got Jacob Davis, a sophomore, taking over. And anytime you got a young quarterback, especially in a conference like the G Walk, you're going to have some growing pains. So the fact that they're only three entering G Walk play is not a, necessarily a good start for the Panthers. Yeah, and Ruzo, a lot like Caden Henson, really good throwing the ball, also great running it on the ground. And, you know, Jared and I, uh, about a week or so before the season started, nice catch there by number five, Johnny Dekas. Um, it's going to be a pickup of about five or six on that play. But we went to a Springboro scrimmage about a week or so before the season started against, was it Middletown? Mason. Mason, yeah. And they, they played pretty well. Like, they, they they looked good. They looked sharp on offense. Their defense was, was making plays. So I'm really kind of surprised to, to see him get off to such a slow start. They got such an explosive playmaker like Will Yates. It's a Ball State commit uh, over there. I mean, you, you would think. His handoff up the middle to Epifino, and that's going to get them a first down out across the 45. Well, Mason's getting shut out by Hamilton 39 to nothing. So maybe that's, maybe that's why. Maybe uh, we went to the wrong scrimmage. <laughs> we went to a good one to have. I mean, we know what he can do, but that was against the down Mason team. There's another, good. there's another Spartan down on the play. Trying to see who it is. We'll have to wait until he gets up. Number 10. So that is Adam Dickerson, or Dixon. Well, Springboro will get a bounce back next week at Beaver Creek. And you can see Dixon after he makes a stop. He kind of rolls over in pain. Looks like they're stretching out it his ankle or whatever, so. Hopefully just one of those cramps. He's gonna run off the field under his own power, so. I tell you, Beaver Creek, they're up 18 to eight over Thurgood. I know it's not a, no, no, sorry, hold on, update, 25 to eight. Looks like a pick six for the Beavers. They haven't won back-to-back -back games since the first two weeks of the 2019 season. Wow. And they, last week, they beat Ponitz 62-7. Uh, 
The stretch run there by Benetez is going to pick up about four and make it a second and six. One more update from Fairborn, 21 to six. Looks like I'm going to pick up another L on the season, picking the Pirates. I think I was the only one of the three of us to pick Fairborn to win that game. Yes, you were. I believe so. I just want to make sure that you guys knew that and remember that. Hey, Tony, we don't rub it in here. You won't be asked back. Let's <laughs> <laughs> come make it third down in a belt. Barrios, which could be his seventh or eighth catch of the game. He's at least had double digit targets. They did call that incomplete, it looks like. Oh. So this is a big third down here for Bellbrook. This is a, you gotta score quickly. Ultimately, it's gotta be an onside kick. Well, this is a, for, before we even get to that, it's 100% every play from here on out is four down territory. Yes. At this point, you can't afford to give these guys the ball back. You gotta convert. Benetis gonna throw it on the run, slings it in, breaks one tackle. And now he's going backwards. That's the wrong way if you're running for the Eagles. Well, oh, he's hold got a lot on. of blockers he's got a in first front of him. Down. Makai Smith was about 75 total rushing yards on that. Picks up enough for the first down. And like you said, he ran back and forth across the field. But what, what, what that was a nice sling by Benettis on the run, kind of short side armed it. Well, you can't. I don't. I don't think we're gonna be able to tell in this replay. But he had a sea of blockers in front of him. But he would just would have kept going forward a little more instead of side to side. He he probably would have had a little more yardage on that. A great way to extend the drive. Either way, an absolutely must have down. They're able to pick it up. Two wide receivers to the top of the screen. And that is back to pass. Benetis throws it to the far side and kind of hit as the ball got there. That is a big time hit. Flag comes out in a flag. late flag, very late. Got to, got to think that the official got that one kind of stuck in his pocket. Either that, or maybe something was said. Let's see what the officials. So yeah, it's got another on that play. Another injured Spartan down. I don't know, maybe we can take a look at this while the refs talk about it. Personal foul. Personal foul. The so coach King is out on the field discussing what the official on that call there. It sure looked like he met him right when that ball touched the receiver's hands. Like they said, they called it a personal foul, not a pass interference, so maybe something was said. And you, you talk about how late the flag came out. Maybe it wasn't even from the play or from the pass. It might have been something that was said. Oh, and we've also seen, you know, a couple times in this game, a couple personal fouls called and whatnot. You know, this chippy rivalry here. Yeah, I mean, this one I think has decided swivel the last couple years, and I think they're almost even coming into this, like, the last 10 meetings. That might be, like, 6-4 right, yeah. in favor of the Spartans. Well, regardless of what our thoughts are on that previous possession, Belbrook continues to march up the field. I believe it's only been about a little over a minute game time, and they're already inside the Valley View 30-yard line. And However you want to look at it, they're they're converting here this quarter, or at least on this drive. Cesar Berryman was the injured Spartan. He's up under his own power and over to the sideline. Benetis throws a quick one out to Berrios. Berrios trying to shake and bake his way through and only gets about a gain of four on the play, maybe five. But th this is what you can't do if you're Belbrook. You're letting too much time off the clock. I'd, I'd like to see a little more urgency here as we wind down the quarter as long as the Eagles have the ball. I agree, Jared. Benetis going to throw this one back. I thought he was going to keep that one. He would have had the first down if he would have ran for it. Berrios gets destroyed in the backfield that time. It looks like they're going to go back to the original line of scrimmage. Loss of about five there. 
And if you're Bilbrick, you can't have possessions like this. You have to get that ball moving forward. You cannot be moving back after, you know, getting that first, after getting some good yardage on that first down. Loss of three on the play. They go forward momentum or progress stopped it. But like I said, Benetis had the first down run if he wanted it. Benetis throws that one there, check down to Barrios or Barrios, and he's knocked down at the 20. So it'll be back to the it'll be fourth and three. Anthony Valenti in there. He's the first guy to make the hit. He came up going incomplete. Maybe he thought that he knocked the ball loose enough to hit the ground. Number 24, Tristan Smith, also in there to make the play. But this is where you leave yourself. Valley View one dimension or Bellbrook one dimensional. You've only been able to throw it to Barrios. So if you're Bellbrook, you're going to have to throw it to somebody other than Barrios on this play. This might be the biggest fourth down of the game right here, guys. Fourth and three. Valley View can convert or Bellbrook, Bellbrook. can convert on this one. Maybe becomes a little bit more interesting a one score game or three, two score game three in the backfield but that is back to pass throws it to the far sideline that is going to be enough for a first down a little trickery there they lined up with three guys in the backfield looked like they were going to try to run a power run there but great job by Benettis to get a quick release out for that first down again Bubbert converting quite well this drive Lucas Heckler Number two, the guy who so made there, the catch. There is another receiver on that roster. Isn't he the punter or the kicker? No, that was 84 or something like that. Oh, okay. Phil, I was going to call his name earlier. 83. I got a timeout. Official's timeout. It's not hot enough. We don't need water breaks this week. Landon Marlara sprinting off for the defense. And you can hear the Spartan student section chanting, hold that line. I think Valley B caught a timeout here. Saw something they didn't like maybe in that formation Belbrook was showing. Belbrook's in the red zone the first time this second half. Got to come away with six here if you're the Golden Eagles. You know, I'm pretty sure that Miamisburg, they use like some uh, some some volume from 300, where where, where uh, the guy where Leonidas is like, this is where we hold them. I don't know why they don't use that. And they are literally the Spartans. They don't have a video board to play it. I mean, you can play the audio. I'm gonna say you can still yeah. play the audio. Everyone would know what that's from. The audio is terrorizing enough if you're an opposing offense and you hear that. <laughs> You know, what's terrorizing enough is every time Miami's work scores and kicks off, they play Crazy Train. Come on, let, let certain songs stay in the decades that they belong in. This is going to create a debate that I don't think you want to have, Jared. So with, we'll, with who? You? Yes. Okay, what? Crazy Train is a legend. I, I know, but after every kickoff, every touchdown scored? Absolutely. Benettis going to keep this one, throws the last second middle of the field. He might have been short on that. They're going to say he's down at the half-yard line. It's that man again. I believe that was Barrios. And if, if, if he could hit him in stride, he's in the end zone. Now, Bellbrook, if you're Bellbrook, you've got to be up on the ball ready to go. This might be a Barrios or Benettis run up the middle. And they're going to, well, no signal yet from the ref. Nothing yet. Nothing yet. Saying he was down. How do they know? Okay. I never saw a signal. And now, the smart play here. Bellbrook. Oh, I thought they were going to line up to go for two. But, well, Benetis is the holder. Who knows? Kick is low. Up, that was low, but through and good. Talk about a line drive. I thought we were done talking about baseball for the night. I'm, I'm fine with that still. <laughs> so guys, while we're waiting for this kickoff, I want to ask, what's the most energetic student section you guys have seen? Jared, you've been doing this for 11 years. Who's been the most energetic you've seen in your play-by-play -play career? That's that's tough because I mean I mean you know they change year in and year out. Some of the better ones, this, this, this the Spartans Army here has always been strong. They've always been loud and obnoxious and 
know Jared would hate to admit this, but Centerville is always always oh, yeah. has a great uh, you, student you, section. You go to Centerville, which we'll go there. We'll be there next week for the first time in a while. Cannot wait for it. That the black hole they call it there. That's that's something to be or to not be a part of, I guess, if you're an opposing team. Mm -hmm. I think, um, I think your Firebirds do a pretty good job getting their students there and getting loud over at Roush and even in basketball season. I was about season. to say, on the basketball side, Dad, you're kind of a hit at a double whammy if you're there when the band's there because that the band director purposely holds on to that last note during the full timeout for the opposing team, and they're right at the end of their bench, can't hear anything. And But, yeah. Um, other schools... I mean, some of the chants we've heard, I mean, and, and we'll hear it in a couple of weeks, probably Oakwood and Valley View always go back and forth at each other, especially when Oakwood dresses up in trash bags. The onside kick, high bounce. Oh, and it is picked up by the Spartans. That was very close. There was the last man there in line for the Elk, or excuse me, for the Eagles, nearly had a chance to grab that. We'll see here in a couple weeks. Oakwood for this game always dresses up in trash bags because they're playing white trash is their reference. And I, I will give it to them. Oakwood was getting demolished one year. It was, it was, the, it was the running clock and we were just trying to get out. And there was a chant going back and forth. Valley View started something and Andy knows what I'm talking about. Oakwood came back with the, it's all right, it's okay, we all know you're gonna work for us one day. I think that was last year. Was that, no. Because we were at, because we were at Oakwood last year. But I, I'm pretty sure it was here though. I, I could have swore it was here. All right then. And we have to go back and check Yeah, because the tapes. We, we were in this press box because in Oakwood we're in the bleachers. Which that's, that's a cool aspect. Caden Henson there. Trying to make a play happen. Why, why is Caden Henson still in the ball game? I don't know. I guess he's a senior and just going to give him all the snaps he he can get. I guess. He he didn't play out of the first quarter against Ponitz. Well, all right, <laughs> you got me. I don't know, Jared. <laughs> Things that make you go hmm. It's both a good and a bad thing. You see Henson on this replay here. You know, he's able to make plays happen, which is a great thing you want in your quarterback. The downside is in a game like this, you also don't want him doing that as much because right. it, I mean, it opens him up. rolled over there, rolls over an ankle? One, he only had six rushes coming into tonight's game. He's got at least double that, like tonight. And so, yeah, this late in the game, you'd think Henson, you're just having him hand it off. Bubba bringing pressure here. Henson. Oh, you're going to get an intentional grounding possibly. He was definitely not outside the pocket. There was definitely not a receiver in the vicinity either. Yeah, because Micah Valenti ran to our side of the field instead of the other side. And there, he, he didn't get back to the line of scrimmage either. Coach Edwards over there asking the referees that it looks like. The referees must have seen something that we didn't see wasn't that play that like you said that's textbook intentional grounding he wasn't out of the tackle box he wasn't there was no receiver in the area and it didn't break the line of scrimmage makes sounds it third like the, and 14. sounds like the student section is starting to go back and forth a little bit love to what, see the energy though what what student section does Billbrook got there's i think they're over there in the red the red sea over there oh I was looking over here and all the far right. I was like, there's a couple tuba players over there. <laughs> that, would, that would be the band, Jared. Well, I, I didn't see anybody else around it. So I thought, well, I mean, you don't see a lot of big away student sections travel well. Well, for rivalry games like this, I mean, you're going to, you want your guys and your students to come out and support and you want to get that back and forth. Now, obviously with a 14 point game, it's a little bit, you don't hear it as much, but if Bellbrook can get some momentum here with these last Five minutes and 43 seconds. I don't know. We could, we could see a little more of a some back and forth. Well, and all, all we really need is is a stop here, a Valley View turnover, and this oh, could yeah, really that. flip things. I mean, if Henson back to pass, Henson you, all day to throw it. Henson's going to tuck it and run. Henson 
across the 50, swats one man out of the way and do dives for that back of the original line of scrimmage. And just a brilliant move that right there by the quarterback. Makes the first guy, Jacob Umina, miss. And then instead of taking a big pop, because there was multiple Eagles on their way, he just says, I'm, I'm going to get down quickly. Does a slide and gets out of there without taking the big hit. Good decision by Bellbrook, too, to only rush three on there, drop back eight, force Henson to try to get that first. And after he made that first guy miss, I thought maybe he was going to be able to Make that happen. Yeah, I think there's only five eagle or ten eagles out there, Jared. No, there's twelve. Oh, there's twelve. There's, oh, they, they got had, two guys back there. Yes. Alrighty. That one gets into the end zone, but Belbert gets away with having twelve men on the field. Would you see me counting over here? <laughs> I, I, I saw you pointing down. I thought you were calling for a down or something. No, I was. I was counting the people, and it looked, I'm pretty sure I counted 12 Golden Eagles. I saw 10 up at the line, so. And they were then there was two, two to return, back. so yeah. yeah. Well, dang. If only there was replay in high school. Fortunately, we have it up here in the booth. I was about to say, we were at a West Carrollton basketball game, and the refs used our replay to overturn a tip ball that went out of bounds. And I think that was only because we sat down on the scores table there. Yep. So a quick score here for the Golden Eagles cuts it to a one possession game. Just under five minutes remaining. Anything is possible. And that is back to pass. Throws it. That's a check down to number five, Johnny Deskins. Her desk is. And I think he got out of bounds, too, so stops the clock. Heads up play there by the senior receiver. So you're going to pick up the first down there, get out of bounds. Only took six seconds off the clock, and that's the type of efficiency they're going to need here in the final four minutes and 44 seconds. You keep hitting those check downs as well. It's going to force the Spartans to start bringing more guys up the line of scrimmage. That opens up that deep ball, which we've seen them succeed on today. Yeah, they haven't thrown too many of them, but when they have, they, they've been pretty successful. And Benetis throws this one out to Smith. Smith slipped. Tripped. Okay, so Tony, you've been doing this a long time, and I'll put it back to you. What, and this can be football or basketball, but what, what is one of the bigger crowds that you've seen for a, a basketball or football game? Locally or just in general? We'll, we'll go locally. Locally? I remember uh, Fairmont does a pretty good job of traveling, I think, for a big school. and. Benetis throws this, checks down to... Is that, that is Smith again? Number three, number Jake three. Lopez. And he has enough for a first down, gets out of bound. I'd say Fairmont for sure. Um, Centerville recently with their success, I think they've they've had some good ones, especially when uh, Gabe Cups was there. Small school, Tri-Village always has brought a good group themselves. Mm -hmm. In terms of the entire state, nobody beats the Ottawa Glendorf Titans out of Putnam County in Northwest Ohio. Their whole town travels extremely well. I'm, I'm glad you said where Benettis, that was located because I had no clue. looking to the clue. sideline to air it out. And there was a little bit of hand checking both ways. I would agree, especially on the basketball side. I mean, we did the game a couple years ago in Fairmont and Centerville at Fairmont, that delayed game from the weather and it was like a packed, sold out trend. But there was more people that went down to the CentOS Center to watch that. Now, I mean, that was almost the packed CentOS Center in the regular in the divisional finals matchup. Re yeah, oh yeah, and I, I remember that game at Trent because I was sitting next to the band because there was so limited seating. You should have come up and sat next to us. You know, we I, had plenty of seats. I wish I would have, Jared. Benetis rolls to the left, throws it down, incomplete, intercepted. intercepted. And this one has a chance to be returned at the 30-20. Let's see if he can meet him there. Cuts it back in at the inside the 10. <laughs> Talk about an explanation point. Jed Lynch, been calling his name all night long, does it one more time. It was a tough uh, uh, catch for Johnny Dequez to try and haul in. Now, if he didn't bobble it, I don't think it would have got intercepted. But yeah, Bobbled it two or three times, and then it almost a house call for, Jade, uh, for, for Jed Lynch. 
So through our first three weeks now, we can say we've called about every scoring way possible. We've seen a, a defensive scoop and score in the first week. When in the altar game, we saw a kickoff return or a punt return in the Miamisburg West Carrollton game. We saw a kickoff return in the Fairmont Trotwell game last week. We've seen an 80 yard run by the quarterback tonight. I don't think there's many more that we can. We've seen a couple of long passes, and it's only week three, Jerry. I said, we're all, it's only three weeks in, fellas. We haven't even got to NFL starting yet. But it has technically been four games. So week one, week one, we, we, we had the, the extra game. We'll have an extra game in a couple of weeks. We're going to double up Oakwood and Waynesville, the Thursday night game. I think that's in two weeks, maybe week five, week five I believe. Yep. And then I think that is also the Fairmont Springboro game that Friday. I'm not entirely sure. I know I'm behind the ball. I should have had a graphic made for our schedule. I'll definitely have that ready for next week. There you go. This one's going to be a hand end around. Cuts it back in and in for six more. I believe is that Lynch. It might have been Valenti there, I think. Musgrove. All right, we were both wrong. <laughs> Everybody's getting, involved. Everybody's getting involved here tonight. At this point, it's, it, it's any number you call, and they have a chance to go for six. I was wondering if they were going to try to punch it in or if they were going to try to maybe take their time a little bit and run some clock off. But the Spartans waste no time no. capitalizing on that interception. That one, that's close, but it's up and good. 42 to 21 now lead the Valley View Spartans, 305 left in the game. And we were two minutes ago from talking about Belbrook driving and getting back into this being down one score. Now back up three. Stranger things have happened, Jared, but the way the Spartans have played this game, I mean, it's it's looking very much like Valley View is going to continue and move to 3-0 and on the year unless we see something magical happen. So a final from LaSalle. The Lancers win 14-7 over the Firebirds, and then we're going to go ahead. If, while you look up the, the next score, I think hey, you got to consider that kind of, I mean, I know, I know it's a loss, but I mean, with how bad the Firebirds defense looked last week, I mean, you shut down. A showed GCL a lot of growth. School. I mean, you held. I mean, that was, it was 14 to nothing in the first quarter. So you shut them out for three quarters, and had a chance probably at the end to maybe tie it up. Yeah, it definitely showed a lot of growth. It wasn't wasn't the way the Firebirds wanted to end it, but so. Centerville just won final 28-17. Centerville wins. Big win for the Oaks there. Oh, was that the one you were getting ready to say, Andy? I I'm sorry. Literally already had it ready, but you're you all good, man. stole his thunder, Jared. I, Come yeah. on. I got another one, not in our region, but we do cover Wayne later on this year. They beat Akron, St. Vincent, and Mary, 22 to 11. That's uh, that's LeBron's school, ain't it? Yep. That I mean, is LeBron's alma mater. And I think LeBron's coach is still there, coaching, if I believe. Basketball? Drew Joyce, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely, I can confirm that. Number 65 on the return, Cole Swallows. Uh, here we go, Oakwood. They started slow, was down seven at the half, but shut out the Bulldogs and win 35 to 14. Hey, there you go. That, it, that's gotta be a first, right? In, in your tenure, Jared, a three and O Lumberjack team? No, they're two and one. They two. lost week one to Marymount. Marymount scored with like 60 sec or a minute left. So oh, 60 right, seconds. Right. Yeah, yeah, I was right. I could have said a minute, but I went. But no, actually, one of, one of the more memorable games I have is the first time that I announced a game here, and it's the only time I've covered an Oakwood win against Valley View. Valley View was up 28 to 7 with six minutes left in the game, and Oakwood won 29 to 28. What? Two onside kicks and a fumble. All right. Got back into That's amazing. I might have to go back and try and find that tape. Maybe we can show highlights from that game here in a couple weeks. Um, Benettis airs this one out, hauled in by 
That's number three again, Lopez. I mean, some of the other ones that I've announced. Um, Fairmont ending the 22 year losing streak to Centerville. That one was good. That one was good, A, as a Firebird alum. I mean, we got handled in that series every year. And so that one felt good. I know that people probably say I was a little bit biased at the end. Um, oh, Benetta's really airing this one out. Um, so if you, if you've only been doing this for 11 years, so you didn't get a chance to call when Braxton Miller was at Wayne when they played Fairmont, did no. you? Okay. I remember being at that game. Um, I think it was Braxton's, it was Braxton's junior senior year. That was the last time the Fairmont made the playoffs before Dave Miller took over, but they beat Wayne like six to two in a very wet and soggy game. Probably hence why it was a six to two ball game, yeah. I'm sure. Um, other ones, I don't know, were you with me, Andy, when Miamisburg and Springboro combined for over a thousand yards of offense and over 120 points? I might have been there. That was, I don't know. I don't know. That Now that I think about it, that might have been like in 16 or 17. So well, maybe. that's when I but started. Yeah. Oh, that's, okay. That's that's right around the time when I, I started. I might, I might have just been doing camera then, though. I'm I'll not have sure. to go back and listen to that one. But yeah, that one. And actually, in that one, Springboro's kicker was kicking an extra point and broke a cop's windshield that was parked outside of um, Holland Field. Talk about some power behind that leg. Oh, he went on to kick for no, or Northwestern. Benetis airing this one out. And they're going to throw a flag, flag, flag for pass interference. There's Lucas Heckler, the intended target, going down the sideline, but he was tackled by a Spartan way before the ball was thrown. So it actually might be a defensive hold. It's better for the Spartans if it was defensive holding. So next week, we're going to get our first G-Walk showdown as the I'm going to assume Miamisburg is going to remain undefeated against Ponant. Mm -hmm. We're going to have the 3-0 Miamisburg Vikings taking on the 2-1 Centerville Elks next week at Centerville Stadium. That'd be a heck of a game. This would be a lot of fun. You know, also another really good game we did a couple years ago, that Stebbins West Carrollton game we did. That was, I mean, there was like 80 was, points put up. That was that was the COVID year, and we split. Yeah. And we're doing two games. Oh yeah, that's right. You were out with uh, me and Lucas were doing. We actually yeah. did the Fairmont Centerville game, where um, Centerville went for two to win 22 to 20, instead of going for the tie. So we've been through a lot. It, it feels so close yet so far away. Still got quite a few games left the rest of this year to make it more memorable. Benetis gonna roll to the left, cut it back in. Benetis and C. Oh, he evades that. Still on his feet. Benetis. Look right into a pillar. He might have enough for a first down. And he will. All right, Jared. So we're not done talking about baseball just yet. Oh my God! Tied up. What are the Reds doing? Tied up. Two-two. Bottom of the ninth. Fairchild on third. Two outs with uh, Benson on. Excuse me. No, Benson just struck out. So with Noel V. Marte up to the plate. He's been 0 for 3 on the day. I don't even know who that is. I haven't watched the Reds in a while. He's he's one of the rookies. Oh. Okay. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. I, there was somebody I saw, I think, made the raw or got called up a couple days ago. It was a weird name that started with an M A. Mancini or Man Mancini? No, they released him and I didn't like that. No, they they got another guy with a very similar name. Speaking of 0 and 3, uh, back to this game, Bellbrook. <laughs> Bellbrook has th uh, three straight miscues here. We got a fourth down and nine. nine. That was a quick three. They just picked up the first down. Got to make a play here. Oh, oh. And you're going the wrong way to make a play. Airs it out. Underthrown. Underthrown, and that one is going to be a knee down for Valley View, probably just to end this one. 
Okay, you, you want to talk about baseball real quick. If, if the Reds do not, if they lost the first game today in the doubleheader against Chicago, if they, they, I feel like they have to sweep the Cubs to try to get back into this thing. I know they're like five and a half or six games back in the wild card, but you you just went to Chicago where you got throttled before they went out west. So there was like 35 runs in three games or something. I think it was in two because one gave up. It was 20 to like three, I think. And then it was another one was like 12 to five. It was bad. It was ugly. And actually here, Marte singled, fair child scored, Reds win. There you go, Jared. And this one belongs to the Reds. No, that's trademarked. I don't think we can say that. Oh. We're right, trying to get say. us canceled, Tony. I'm we're gonna, not, we're I'm not taking Marty's line. Marty. This is my first time. I apologize, Marty Brenneman, one of the greatest sportscasters of all time. That is for sure. Got the pleasure of meeting him a couple months ago over the summer at the Red City Connect event. Heck of a lot of fun. And Valley View is one kneel down away from ending this one, putting finals up on the scoreboard. So Valley View is going to move to 3-0. and Belbert's going to fall to 1-2. and I don't know if many people paid attention, but every week, Andy, we're challenged. Well, I'm, I'm more challenged. Sometimes you can throw in a couple, but I don't think you knew this one. I was doing Price is Right games. All right. In honor of Bob Barker passing away. I ended up getting 13 in there. Oh, you should have waited. You should have done the poll tonight. Oh, I should have. But, I mean, I guess in honor of Bob Barker, you got to say it. Remind you to help control the pet population. Have your pets spayed or neutered. I think and that's trademark, too. I'm not calling that. He, he's dead. He can't come back and sue me. There you but go. no, so Valley View wins 42 to 21. I don't think it's a, without a doubt that Caleb Henson is the player of the game. Running all over the field, throwing it all over the field, even doing it in the kicking game. I mean, what what doesn't the, the young man do? He's just so talented, and Valley View off to a 3 0 start. We got a chance to go undefeated. We'll see if that happens. That's going to do it for Jared Burks from Andy Horton and Tony Peters in the booth. The rest of the Miami Valley Communications crew and students from Fairmont and West Carrollton High School. We will see you guys next week at Centerville High School for the Vikings versus the Elks. That's all, folks. Here with Spartans quarterback Cade Henson. Cade, first off, congrats on being player of our game. Thank you. And you guys started off, I mean, you had that 80-yard touchdown run to open it up. For, let's talk about, I mean, what did you see when you first went through the line and then as you progressed down the field? Well, I uh, I didn't know that that play was going to go for that much, and then um, I started run downhill, and the hole just opened, like, huge, and I just ran straight through it and untouched all the way to the end zone. I just was trying to run as fast as I could. And you got a lot done through the air, but you got a lot more done almost doubling your season total for runs. So what, adding the running game to your aspect, I mean, you, you're one of the most unstoppable quarterbacks in Southwest Buckeye League in the south area here of Ohio. Uh, I think that's, uh, that's pretty cool. I think um, definitely having two parts of the game is really, really important for a quarterback because it makes them cover the entire field. And if you can stretch them out, that opens the pass. And when they come down, then, I mean, we can get some runs off of them, too. So, I think it's really good, yeah. Um, move, 
no, no. stay down, please. Um, success last year, deep playoff run. How does it roll over this year, starting 3-0? and uh, That's still the plan this year. Uh, I think we've had a lot of guys who have played for a long time, and um, we're back, and we that's that's we kind of raised the bar to there now. So that's what we're going to be trying to do this year, too. All right, thanks. Congrats. We'll see you against Oakwood. Thank you. All right, here with Spartans head coach Matt King. First off, congrats on the win. Thank you. Appreciate it. It was a lot of fun. And uh, it, it was a tight game there at the half. I think yeah. it was you were either tied or up one score. Yeah. But what did you say to your kids in the locker room to come out and start that second half? Yeah, they just needed to execute a little bit better. We had some things that we kind of blew some assignments here and there, and so it was good to clean some things up. And, and if they keep playing like they did, and, and it takes care of it. And we saw tonight Cade kind of added back his second attack with the air, or the ground game. Yeah. What does that do, help you guys maybe it, later on in the season? Yeah, it's, it's good to see because we know that he's got that ability. Um, it's just a matter of, you know, him trusting it. Um, and he did a great job tonight. It was really nice. And deep playoff run last year. How's that rolled over this year? You guys start 3-0 and on the season. Yeah. So good start, and we just got to build. Just got to build. And so um, started out strong, but if we don't get better, it's not going to matter. So we got to keep going. All right, congrats on the win. Thank Appreciate you, Coach. Good luck the rest of the year. Thank you.